I really admired. Every ball that went up, it seemed like they thought it was theirs. And that's the attitude you have to have to be a good rebounding team. And we've had that attitude at, at times this year, and we have to get it back. Well, there's no question they will get it back time. It's just going to be effort and concentration. Two of the top three rebounding teams in the ACC. Mike, Larry, there are tickets available, it looks like. Come on down from Atlanta. I'll tell you what, you're not getting us out of this warm studio tonight. Thank you very much, Tom and Mike. Welcome in, Laura Oakman. Now, good news, bad news for a youngster at Clemson. He's playing as a freshman in the ACC, but he's a point guard. <laughs> now, that may be bad news for some, but not this kid. He's something pretty special. Now, the first thing you'll see when reading Vernon Hamilton's profile in Clemson's media guide is, quote, first-year freshman who could have an impact this year. <laughs> Chalk one up for the sports information director, but this freshman isn't just having an impact. He is flat out blowing him away. He runs the offense. He shoots the rock. He even cleans the glass. And this guy's a freshman? Vernon Hamilton has had a lot of responsibility heaped on his young shoulders by first year Clemson coach Oliver Purnett. Being the only point guard on the roster will do that to you. But Vernon has pleasantly surprised the Tigers with maturity and skill uncommon for a first-year player. I think by and large it's been positive. Uh, you know, he's a guy that has the intangibles, I think, to be a leader. Uh, and I think those things come through sometimes. The freshman itis uh, comes through uh, sometimes. But uh, it's been pretty much as I, I, I've expected. I, I've tried to, um, you know, step back, you know, after each game and analyze how I played and, you know, what I can do different. Uh, it's definitely, you know, a challenge, you know, night in, night out. Because, you know, on the court, you know, I mean, in the classroom, you're a freshman. But on the court, you're not expected to be, you know. So, you know, if I'm out there playing with the guys, you know, I have to, you know, play, you know, somewhere, you know, that a junior or a senior would play, you know. And, you know, I have to come out, you know, real early, you know, in your career here. And just, you have to show well. Showing well is not only encouraged, but expected. After all, this is the ACC. I followed the ACC ever since I was little because my sister went to Wake Forest. So, you know, I was always, you know, watching Wake Forest play. And, uh, you know, just all the tremendous guards have come out of there. So, you know, it's always, I've always enjoyed watching. I, I think it's, you know, the best conference in the country. Uh, you know, night in and night out, you're going to play against, you know, the best players in the country. And uh, it's, it's definitely something that you have to, you know, mentally prepare yourself for. You know, you're going to have ups and downs, you know, you know, being a freshman and you know, just improve, you know, after each game. While Burton has plenty of athletic ability, much of his success can be traced to the steady hand of Coach Purnell, who has shown uncommon patience in developing his young charge. You know, he always calls me over, you know, puts his arm around me and is like, you know, Vernon, you know, if I, if I do, if I make a bad pass or a wrong decision, he's like, Vernon, you know, you're better than that. Uh, you put your hand on his uh, shoulder and you talk to him about a lot of things. And, and one of those things is doing what's next, uh, forgetting about mistakes, uh, you know, going on to the next play, uh, hand on your business off the floor. All of those kinds of things are things that any college student has to go through. So just because you're a freshman, you know, point guard in the ACC doesn't mean you have, don't have to go through. You know, when you know that you know someone's in your corner and behind you, you know it makes you feel really good. You know, especially the coach has the confidence in me that I'm the point guard. You know, to run this team, so I try to use it to my advantage. And you know, it does. It gives you a lot of confidence, and you feel like you can go out there and just play. So since he's so important to the team, Vernon probably hasn't faced the typical rookie treatment from the upperclassmen, right? Hey, they have given it to me. <laughs> Definitely, Chris Hobbs has brought me in, and you know. Help show me the way, you know, and carrying bags off the plane in the cold, you know, the doing you have to do is just part of the ropes being a freshman. Just got, got to do it. Seems Vernon takes it in stride, just like everything else he's had thrown his way this season. A season that just could be a glimpse of good things to come for clubs and basketball. You're going to have your ups and downs. You know, you got to learn from it. Uh, you can't can't get down, you know, because if you put your head down, then, you know, you'll get behind, you know, and, and it doesn't, doesn't, you know, allow you to fare well, you know, in the conference. But if, you know, if you stay focused and, you know, concentrate, you know, and, and Coach Brunel, he, he's helped me out, you know, he's really, you know, guiding me, you know, along the way, you know, and molding me into being, you know, the point guard for this basketball team. So, you know, the main thing is you just, you got to believe that you, that you can do it. Boy, and he, as he believed it, Clemson has a history of some pretty hefty four-year point guards. They lost one last year in Ed Scott, who left the school as Clemson's number two all-time assist leader. So, guys, he has some pretty hefty shoes to fill. But when you have a point guard who loves to play defense, I think you're on to something. And his numbers as a freshman better than Edward Scott so far. Laura, thank you very much. Larry, let's talk about that. I had the game in Charlottesville, Virginia on Tuesday. It was a return home for the youngster Vernon Hamilton. He had nine turnovers. Each time a turnover or two, Oliver Purnell. 
Brought him to the bench, put his arm around him, coached him. Point guard teaching point guard. And Mike, I've done a lot of games when he was at Dayton. I'm talking about Oliver Purnell as the basketball coach. And over the years in watching him handle players, I know how he likes to take point guards and mold them in his own making. This is a guy who is very experienced that knows how to coach guards. And he'll take him and he'll teach him exactly what he wants him to do. You know, you got to remember, Oliver Purnell is a guy who's had a lot of experience. I mean, he's not a rookie. He knows what he's getting into, and I think he's got a good point guard. I think he does, too. And the confidence that they talked about in the piece, which was nicely done, just proves that he is the point guard for all four years. Bottom of the hour, don't forget ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Talking about point guards succeeding a good one. How about at Maryland? John Gilchrist has an attack mode not featured in Stephen Blake's arsenal, according to Georgia Tech head coach Paul Hewitt. We set tonight's table when Keo Sarah. College basketball tip-off rolls on. Introducing the all-new Nissan Quest. A special announcement from the Bargain Network. You can buy cars for as low as $500. Choose from thousands of cars repossessed and seized by the U.S. Customs, IRS, FBI, and private organizations. Call 800-831-6931. Foreclosed homes and distressed properties are selling for as low as $199 a month. HUDs, VAs, and FHAs, repos, and more. Through the Bargain Network, I got my dream car, and I saved a lot of money. New cars and homes are being added every day. For listings in your area, call now. 800-831-6931. Call now. Wednesday on Countdown to Signing Day, it's Commitment Wednesday, as four of the nation's elite All-South recruits will be announcing their college decisions live in studio. First up, it's D.L. Aaron Jones, followed by athlete extraordinaire Kenny Ingram. Next, will it be the Tide or the Dogs for D.L. Lorenzo Washington? Then, O.L. Leon Hart announces his big decision. Plus, special guest Xavier Carter. Wednesday at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net. Televised poker is for real. It's taken America by storm. Now, the poker series that all of Europe is talking about comes to the U.S. Introducing Late Night Poker, featuring the top players from around the globe each and every night. This is getting personal. It's television's only nightly poker series, and it's only on Fox Sports Net. Where Southern fans come first. Fox Sports Net. It's an ACC battle. Oliver Purnell's Hungry Tigers will be on the prowl at the Thriller Dome when they take on Paul Hewitt's talented Jackets. Clemson versus Georgia Tech, Tuesday at 7 on Fox Sports Net. ACC fans, every Monday at 6.30, join host Mike Hogwood to get the most comprehensive and in-depth coverage from around the conference. From tip-off to the final buzzer, ACC Live is your front row seat. ACC Live, Mondays at 6.30 Eastern on Fox Sports Net. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to the Keo Sarah tip-off show. Maryland at Clemson, ACC Sunday Night Hoops, bottom of the hour. Hey, take a look at this. Oh, no. What a big week for what our power this? forward, Larry Conley. <laughs> Always an honored alum at Rupp Arena. Larry celebrated his 60th birthday this week as a player in the 60s. Look how good-looking you were, Larry Conley. And look how much lighter I was. Look how quick he was playing for the legendary Adolph Rupp. I can't believe you haven't even aged. Look at the quicks right here. For our buddy Larry Conley, a smooth transition oh, from goodness. player to broadcaster. Larry has spent 29 college basketball seasons on radio and television, working over 1,300 games. You've seen the world. You've had a little fun. How about when you How about when you got spilled all over working with Dave Strader, or when your good old buddies at Jefferson Pilot staged a fake warrant and arrest for you for unpaid parking tickets? Celebrated athlete, my partner Laura Oakman is here. Happy 60th birthday, my friend. For the first time in my life, I am absolutely speechless. <laughs> and, and you know I what? can't believe you got all that footage. <laughs> and you know what? There are many producers around the world who would say, that is the first time in your life that you've been speechless. <laughs> Lloyd Max and our producer, thank you so much. That is very kind. Laura, Mike, you guys are terrific. I wanted thank to thank you, for you for a cake. cake. Happy birthday. Make a wish. Well, thanks out. very much. I just wish that for everybody to have a good season and we finish up with a good, strong year. Happy 60th birthday. Thanks, guys. One thanks of the great much. guys of college basketball. We are fortunate 
excited to have him right here on our team. Our other team is in Clemson. It is Maryland at Clemson, ACC, Sunday Night Hoops. Tom Brenneman, Mike Jaminski are set with the call. The weather not cooperating, but believe me, the teams are ready to go. This has been the Kyocera College Basketball Tip-Off Show. Enjoy the first half, everybody. We're going to sit, watch the game, have some of Larry's birthday cake. So long, everybody. Just relax. Try to think of something simple like making a collect call by dialing down the center with 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -T. It's free for you and cheap for them. Okay, my turn. Save on every call. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. Introducing the Kyocera SL300R with exclusive R2 technology. It powers up in less than a second. It shoots the moment you press the shutter button. And it captures picture after beautiful picture at a blazing three and a half frames a second until your memory card is full. As our friends in Japan say, instant victory, which probably makes a lot more sense in Japan. Kyocera SL300R, the fastest digital camera on the planet. Kyocera. Instant victory! The 260 horsepower Infiniti G35, one of car and driver's 10 best for two years running. A dream to drive, the Infiniti G35. You want to see how we do football? Keep your eye on this. <laughs> Just football. This is NFL Street. Rated E for everyone. Show your style online. Only on PlayStation 2. EA Sports. The passage is intense. But if you complete the journey, you will find your destiny among the world's greatest warriors. The few, the proud, the Marines. Word has that someone here is trying to make a collect call. Just dialed on the center with 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. It's free for you and cheap for them. What do you say you and I giddy up out of here and go hit a disco? Or not. Save on every call. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. Tonight, the Clemson Tigers have a Ford in their future, and the future is now. Junior Sherrod Ford leads the Tigers on the home turf against a young Maryland team led by Jam and Jamar Smith. The Turks continue to rattle the conference, but which Maryland team will travel tonight? A critical ACC game for Maryland. The Terrapins in Clemson next. ACC Sunday night. It is a cold, snowy night in Clemson, South Carolina. In fact, we're under a winter storm watch here in the South. But they're rolling in and trying to take on the elements here at Little John Coliseum tonight. We welcome you to ACC Sunday Night Hoops as the Maryland Terrapins come to town to battle the Clemson Tigers. And a pleasant good evening to you. Alongside the former Duke All-American Mike Jaminski, I'm Tom Brenneman. Thanks so much for being with us. Mike, these are strange days indeed for the Maryland Terrapins. One in three so far in the Atlantic Coast Conference, and I know you feel as though they really need a win here tonight. Well, you know, Gary Williams isn't one to make excuses, and he doesn't want to put too much on one game. But the fact of the matter is that if they lose this game, they're in the cellar. He and his team needs to have some confidence on the road. In their last game, a loss against Duke at Maryland. They were dominated on the glass. That's got to get turned around tonight. And it makes for a nice matchup inside. Jamar Smith averaging a double-double can get it done off the glass. Sherrod Ford is a shot-blocking machine 
inside. Smith also the ability to put the ball on the floor, and uh, we see Sherrod Ford very good defensively, getting deflections, and he can finish at the rim. Now we'll take a look at the numbers for these two guys. Very compelling. Jamar Smith leading the ACC in rebounding. Sherrod Ford second in blocks. These are changing times, meanwhile, at Clemson. They have a new head coach, and Oliver Purnell is looking to get this program turned around. First things first, however, Mike, the challenge of scoring points. Well, and, uh, you know, it, Oliver Purnell knows that point guard is a key, and it has been historically in this league. Phil Ford, the greatest point guard ever, getting it done over at Chapel Hill, starting the legacy, and then you look at the depth this year. Jared Jack at Georgia Tech helping them play well. Raymond Felton getting out, getting it done at North Carolina. Chris Paul, the freshman, has energized Wake Forest. The senior, Chris Duhon at Duke, may be having his best season since their championship run. And then John Gilchrist for Maryland playing as well. Now, Oliver Brunel knows how difficult this position is. So Vernon Hamilton, the freshman, won't start tonight, trying to take some pressure off of him. He's had a rough go lately. 11 turnovers, no assists in the last two games. Jawan Robinson will take his place in the Clemson starting lineup. Coach Purnell told us Hamilton will be in early and off. More to come from Clemson. Enjoy your new Durango. <gasps> Look, it's got a DVD. And see how smooth the ride is for you and Fluffy. Liz, what are you doing to him? I'm just showing little Joey the new Durango. Son, there's only one thing you need to know. Hemi. Can you say Hemi? Hemi. That's my boy. The all-new Dodge Durango. Big size, smooth ride. Hemi power. Starting under 26.6. <laughs> Growing up, Fred and Ernie were very close. They had to be. They were born joined at the finger. But then everything changed when Ernie became one of those bandwagon fans. Check out my new Lakers jersey. You know you're going to lose? Oh, I'll see you later. Oh, yeah! Booyah! Yeah! Booyah in your face! So while Fred has no choice but to put up with teams he doesn't care about, thankfully, you do. Welcome back to Little John Coliseum in Clemson, South Carolina. Our Toyota leaderboard in both the Sagarin and RPI ratings. The Atlantic Coast Conference, the number one basketball conference in the land. The ACC is the place to be. Another chapter in Atlantic Coast Conference basketball coming up next. Here in their natural habitat, a young male demonstrates his suitability as a provider by offering the female a substantial prize. Ah, oh, he's impressed her. Wrap your paws around Taco Bell's new 99-cent cheesy bean and rice burrito. It's a full half pound and loaded with three cheeses, fiesta sauce, and a cheesy zesty kick. Now 99 cents is tasty and filling. When you think outside the bun. Forty-eight microprocessors for speed, voice recognition, for ease and satellite tracking in case of theft or emergency or if you just want a good seafood restaurant.
technologically advanced Acura RL, whether you measure it in horsepower or gigabytes. Nike Shocks Turbo. The most colors are only at finish line. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Staples. That was easy. And brought to you in part by Acura. Experience the performance today in your local Acura dealer. And by Pioneer Plasma Displays, taking high-definition television to a whole new level. It is just a miserable night outside Little John Coliseum, and it certainly has kept some of the people at home. Take a look at our UPS starting lineup, and we begin with the visiting Maryland Terrapins. Ikene Ibekwe went into the starting lineup five games ago in place of Travis Garrison. Jamar Smith, as Mike mentioned a moment ago, averaging a double-double. Meanwhile, for the Clemson Tigers, the one key change that we talked about briefly, Shawan Robinson rather than Vernon Hamilton. Well, and I think it's a good move by Oliver Purnell. Uh, you know, Hamilton's struggling right now. You don't want him to lose confidence. He's still going to get a lot of playing time. We asked Oliver Purnell about one of the keys tonight, and he thought rebounding might decide this one. Well, that's our anchor, defense and rebounding. That's what we've done well. Uh, that's what's kept us in ball games. That's what's given us an opportunity to be in a position to win some that we haven't quite gotten. So that's got to be big for us. If we don't rebound, uh, you know, we don't have a shot. So that's got to be big for us. Mike, these are two of the top three rebounding team as far as rebounding margin is concerned in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Two and three behind Duke. Well, and if you're and watching tape, I'm sure Oliver Purnell has, has seen what Maryland has given up on the offensive glass uh, over 20 twice uh, against Carolina and at Duke. So an opportunity there, even if Clemson isn't shooting well, to score per possession. Ford to tip it off with Smith, and Ford got an early start. And I think they're going to give the ball to the Maryland Terrapins. They will. Let's take a look at our Staples game plan. G-Man, let her rip. Well, Maryland, rebound, rebound, rebound. They've got to get back to form, and especially on the defensive glass. And for Clemson, they don't want to get into a track. Mate. They've got to control the pace and keep this a low-scoring game. John Gilchrist, a sophomore, point guard for the Terrapins. And there's a fadeaway tough shot by Kaner Medley, and immediately Maryland to the offensive glass. And Ibekwe lost it out of bounds. The offense to get Kaner Medley going, he really was uh, the only offensive option working against Duke in the second half of that game. 21 points for him. the way up and Shawan Robinson will trigger the offense. Robinson can play out of the point or the two. He's a good shooter. Yeah, more, more of a scoring guard, but uh, you're right, uh, capable and has seen minutes at the point. Maybe a little inexperience for Robinson at the point there. Although he drains the jumper after missing Hobbs on the pick and roll. Yep. <laughs> doing what you do best in that situation. And that's why it's hard for scorers to be point guards, Tom. You know, you look at it, you miss the timing of a play sometimes. Fortunately, he had that to fall back on. Yeah, that's certainly uh, the same holds true as we mentioned about John Gilchrist. Gilchrist had 27 points against Georgia Tech, only one assist. Well, we, we see the pressure defensively, and this is an effort by Maryland to try to pick the tempo up here, get some turnovers, and get out in the open floor. The Gilchrist, very strong and very active. And off the mark on a three-point try by John Gilchrist. Sherrod Ford with a rebound. Well, you watch Ford, and you see him in person, such an impressive body. His numbers have gotten better and better, and this now his third year, but you think he has a chance to be a really good player, right? Uh, and he's got upside, and I believe that Oliver Purnell will bring that out in him. It's very important in Purnell's offense to have strong low-post players, and uh, Sherrod Ford uh, is, is like you said, he's, he's a work in progress, but I believe by the middle of next year, he's going to be a factor. First game all year long that the freshman out of Richmond, Virginia, Vernon Hamilton, has not started this season. Not bad numbers. But he has turned the ball over. Of course, he's not alone as there's a whistle underneath. And a foul will go against Jamar Smith. I mean, Clemson is averaging 
over 20 turnovers per game. Now, to, to put that in perspective for the audience, that's every one out of every three possessions in a game, they're turning it over. I mean, that wow. just puts too much pressure on your defense, and it puts too much pressure on the other two-thirds of your possessions that you've got to do something very well. well it's no wonder they're the lowest-scoring team in a conference. When you're turning it over a third of the time, you have to shoot 65, 70 percent to score 65 or 70 points. Yeah, no question. And uh, not a lot of great three-point shooters on that team, so uh, offense just very, very tough to come by. Lecrae, little fadeaway and bangs it in the first Maryland basket. This little curl on that play. McCray has got a little bit of a size advantage over Shea Christie, so he can elevate on the jump shot and score over the top. Maryland trying to put a lot of pressure on Clemson. Turnover prone, to say the least. You'll see the curl right out of here on the play on the other side. Uh, Christie was the one who nailed that jump shot. McCray able to knock it down. <laughs> Three bodies hitting the deck. And they dump it in low to Chris Hobbs out of Chapel Hill in the senior. Yeah, Hobbs in the fadeaway. Hobbs is a guy who plays much better here in Little John. Averages almost 12 points a game. And I think if they can get both him and Ford going, it'll be a real bonus in this game. Clemson is a team much, much better at home. Trigger spins into the lane and can't get the roll. Clemson 8-2 here at home. Winless on the road. 0-5 this year. Christie. Had, yeah, had it partially blocked. Yeah, McCray got a piece of that one. Once again, the long arms and the size advantage coming into play for McCray defensively. Smith hacked on the way up. Did they get Hobbs or did they get Ford? It'll be on Chris Hobbs his first. Here's a look inside and uh, just able to catch the ball in position. Had Jamar Smith on his back. What a year it has been for Jamar Smith. Very limited playing time last season as a junior college transfer. Did not start a game. Averaged five points and three rebounds. Yet here he is this year averaging a double-double. One of only 17 players in the country and one of two, along with Sean May, that play in the ACC. Well, it, you know, benefited really from playing against Ryan Randall in practice yeah, last year. So, uh, you know, minutes on the court limited, but certainly he got familiar with the system and was able to step in. And uh, in this flex offense for Gary Williams, uh, you can, if you have certain skills as a big man, you can play very well. And uh, Jamar Smith has adapted well to it. It's both of his free throws. You saw Vernon Hamilton check in. As Oliver Purnell told us, he would very early, along with a junior college transfer, Lamar Rice. And just like that, a five-second violation. Well, it's tough. You know, you come off the bench, your first experience in the game, you haven't even broken a sweat, you're handling the ball, and you get a five-second call. But do you want your point guard throwing the ball in bounds? Well, that's, you know, you, you think in that situation you'd want him as a receiver. Yeah. Freshman, as we mentioned, out of Benedictine High School in Richmond, Virginia. A play to the basket and tipped in by Jamar Smith. You know, that's the one thing. If you're playing against Sherrod Ford, you know that he is going to go to penetration to try to block everything. So you become a free rebounder in that situation if you go to the front of the rim. Good ball movement to break the pressure that time by Clemson and kicked out of bounds. Well, here's the look. Everybody you saw both Hobbs and Ford, their two primary rebounders, had to go to penetration. Nobody to block out inside on Smith. Ford to the basket, got his own rebound, kept it high above his head and drops it in. And that's a good teaching point, too. A lot of big guys will bring the ball down and get it stripped in that situation, but by keeping it high, he was able to get it right back up on the rim. Offensive foul against Smith underneath. That's his first. Well, so far, both teams getting an A for offensive rebounding. I don't know about the other side, how you'd grade it out, but Sherrod Ford made a nice play there. Well, that would all depend on who you're talking to. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> and obviously, Gary, as he made it very clear to us a little bit earlier today, not happy at all with his team's rebounding effort against the Duke Blue Devils. You give up, you know, you hold a team to 36% shooting. You've done a great job. However, that gets negated by giving up 24 offensive rebounds. Rice can shoot it. Off 
off the iron, crash in the boards is Smith, and he rips away the rebound. A one-point Clemson lead, four minutes gone in the opening half. Good give and go there. McCray to Smith, back to McCray. And he's gotten involved early offensively. That was a nice cut off the flex inside. Clemson not reacting well to it. Again, Akinbala's checked in for the first time for Clemson. The sophomore, a native Nigerian, who played high school basketball in Brunswick, Connecticut. And he's got the ball down low. Little jump up. Rice to the glass. Off the glass, tried it again. Another offensive rebound, and he called the bank. Sometimes the backboard gets in the way at a good time, but great offensive board work by the Clemson Tigers. And the small crowd is loving it. Partially blocked by Robinson. Clemson will get it. Leading 9-8 with 15.06 to play in the opening half. Both teams believe rebounding is a strength, and both teams crashing the glass on a frigid night. Introducing the Kyocera SL300R with exclusive R2 technology. It powers up in less than a second. It shoots the moment you press the shutter button. And it captures picture after beautiful picture at a blazing three and a half frames a second until your memory card is full. As our friends in Japan say, instant victory, which probably makes a lot more sense in Japan. Kyocera SL300R, the fastest digital camera on the planet. Kyocera. Instant victory! This is the guy who fell for the girl. She's not dull. Who has a plan. $200,000. To steal this guy's money. Getting in deep, aren't you? The Big Bounce, rated PG-13, starts Friday, January 30th. The images you are about to see are 100% authentic. The Xterra Owners Club has no fees and no dues. All you need is a Nissan Xterra and some proof. It's even easier to join the club with 0.9% financing or $1,000 cash back. The 100% authentic Nissan Xterra, now with 0.9% or $1,000 cash. You've got lots of choices. I need to haul stuff. There's Ram or Dakota. The kids. Stratus or Caravan. Caravan. And 0% financing or cash allowance. Plus a cash allowance. Did you say plus? Announcing Zero Plus, a groundbreaking offer of 0% financing plus a $2,000 cash allowance, plus our seven year or 70,000 mile powertrain limited warranty. Hurry, Zero Plus just made the best values in America even better. Well, the, the room for improvement is easy. You know, our, our uh, turnovers uh, above 20 a game, uh, you know, that's really killing us. It's putting too much pressure on our defense. And our defense has been solid for us. That's been the anchor for us. So that's the thing. When you turn the basketball over, a lot of things don't happen. We want to go inside. There's less opportunities uh, to get the ball inside. Uh, we want to be a great defensive team. Right now, we're a good defensive team. One of the reasons we're not a great defensive team is because they're scoring uncontested layups off turnovers, which you cannot defend. Well, the spin control would say there's a, only one way to go, but up uh, Clemson 321st um, in the NCAA in turnovers wow. per game. However, tonight, first five minutes, only one turnover against the Maryland defense that's tried to be very aggressive. And they continue to be aggressive. Full court pressure after the timeout. Oliver Brunel did such a fabulous job at the University of Dayton. Well, you talk about one of the great basketball cities in all of America. And Brunel brought that program back. Traveling violation against Akinbaba. Well, and I think, you know, many have kind of wondered why he would leave that situation. But I think the allure of the ACC. No doubt. Too great. You know, to get in the best conference in the country. And, of course, uh, Pernella, Maryland native. They were born in Berlin, Maryland, and served as an assistant coach for three years at the University of Maryland under Lefty Drizel and Bob Wade. Fade away by Travis Garrison, who's come off the bench. Garrison has struggled offensively in the last five, only eight of 27, and if they can get him going, it'll be a huge lift to their bench. Gary Williams and John Gilchrist neither can believe 
that Gilchrist was called for the foul, and that is his second personal, and not even six minutes have gone by. Now freshman D.J. Strawberry will have to come in. Uh, he became the de facto backup point guard when Andre Collins transferred early in the year. Well, we saw D.J. Strawberry pour in 17 against Pepperdine, one of our earlier ACC Sunday Night Hoop games. Uh, he's uh, played extremely well against Pepperdine, and uh, he really Tom, does a lot of things without the basketball. Block shots, steals, can make a play, can defend. Gary Williams loves him. Robinson late on the trigger, gets it to Hamilton. Too strong, and Rice trying to get to the glass. Frey able to save it for the Terrapin. And now Strawberry runs the offense in place of Gilchrist. Nice feed from Tainer Medley into Smith, and he'll go to the line. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna front inside, you've got to have help out on the perimeter, and. Uh, you know, there's just no pressure on Kaner Medley. He can make that pass easily and pick it up, pick him apart inside. I think Lamar Rice has got to put more ball pressure there to make that a more difficult play. Shawan Robinson whistled for the foul, his first. Smith now two of three from a line tonight. Talked about Jamar Smith averaging a double-double, number one in the conference and rebounding ninth in the NCAA. Eight double-doubles on the year, but hasn't had one in his last four games. Yep. There's an area where he has really left points on the table on the free throw line, only a 43% shooter. Imagine what the scoring average would be if he were 70%. Smith, that last trip to the line, missed as many free throws as J.J. Redick has missed all season. Redick, 61 of 66 on the year. Amazing. Like we said earlier, we're room for improvement there as well. <laughs> Another turnover. Akinbala with a three-second violation. They're just real swarming inside. It's tough. You got to move quickly against this Maryland Terrapin team. Maybe one dribble, Tom, and get the ball up on the on the rim. And then the Terps turn it right back over. Well, let's see how that offense operates without John Gilchrist. Uh, we talked about Strawberry, who was actually before the Florida game early in the year when uh, the Gary Williams went to him and said, "Have you ever played point guard?" And he said, "No." He said, "Well, you're about to." <laughs> Gilchrist got in foul trouble in that game. Yep. Gilchrist eventually fouled out of that game, and Florida then ranked number one in the country was knocked off in Gainesville by Maryland. Weiss knocks it in. He can shoot. Nickname Minute for his ability to get hot in a hurry. <laughs> Great nickname. <isn't> it? <laughs> minute Rice. Better than dirty. Painter <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Medley had it stripped away and still found a way to get it against the glass and in the bucket. Yeah, you, you've got to keep him from going to his left hand. I mean, he's just too good that way, and it showed a lot of strength for him to finish. Christy dribbles in traffic, nearly turned it over. Maryland defending 30, 40 feet away from the basket. Hamilton, great penetration. You know, talk about getting some confidence in a ball game. A play like that could go a long way, not only for Hamilton, but Akinbala getting involved offensively. Eighth lead change of the game already. Traveling. Here's the strong drive against Rice going left. Had the ball actually out of his hands for a split second. And then Vernon Hamilton coming off the bench, making the play inside. Dad, now, can you find another place for your backpack? Limited online bill paying. Free from Bank of America. Right there. Higher standards. What if all wheel drive had brains? Constantly adjusting. Giving you the handling of rear wheel drive. 
the traction of all-wheel drive, but only when you need it. Introducing the Infiniti G35 with intelligent all-wheel drive that changes with the weather. The passage is intense. But if you complete the journey, you will find your destiny among the world's greatest warriors. The few, the proud, the Marines. Preparing for winter, these docile little fellows savor a tasty feast. Ever alert, at the first sign of danger, they react. Wrap your paws around Taco Bell's new 99 cent cheesy bean and rice burrito. It's a full half pound and loaded with three cheeses, fiesta sauce, and a cheesy zesty kick. Now 99 cents is tasty and filling. When you think outside the bun. Welcome back to ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Let's get you caught up around the nation. Oregon at number 14, Arizona. The Wildcats led by 25 at the break. They get 20 points from Hassan Adams, 18 and 11 from Channing Fry. Arizona scores 90 points for the fourth straight game. Mike Jaminski, will Arizona be the team to derail Stanford's perfect season? Not going to happen, Goldie. No way. Mark it down. I got an Arizona resident sitting next to me. The Cardinal. They're going down and going down hard. You're such, a, you're such a homer. It's Absolutely. Unbelievable. Why not? Unbelievable. Why not? Where's the integrity? None. <laughs> they break the pressure, and Hamilton a little too fancy there. Yeah, you, Three on one. You know, when you've had 11 turnovers in the last two games, you've just got to make simple basketball plays, and uh, Hamilton getting caught up a little bit. Oliver Purnell, uh, this isn't a punishment timeout. This is to have a conference on the sideline. You like seeing that, don't you, Mike? Oh, yeah, I mean, you, you know, talk to the kid. Right. Let him know what he did wrong. Get him back in the ball game. Uh, no, that's, a, that's a great piece of coaching and teaching right there. Oliver Purnell, an outstanding player in his days at Old Dominion, led the Monarchs to the NCAA Division II National Championship. 74-75 was a team MVP. They just didn't get it across the timeline. Akinbaba to Baba Lola. Don't say that quick. Akinbala giving him excellent minutes off the bench. And now Baba Lola to the floor. Akinbala. When you, can say, doing when you can say those names, G Man, you do it while you're on a roll. That's why you're award winning. Oh, yeah. Because you know you're going to mess him up sooner or later. Baba Lola, a native of London, and Akin Akinbala, we told you, from Nigeria. You're a one-hit wonder on that last scramble. <laughs> You're probably right. But I tell you, you know, it's, it's nice to see good hustle on that play, and the longer Clemson stays in this game, more confidence they'll have. Big Christie off the inbounds play. Knocks it in, and Clemson in front by one. One of the streakier shooters in the league, and he's been on a little downturn the last three games, only three of 17, but he can turn it around quickly. Jones, a freshman, has checked in for the Terrapins. Shot clock at 15. And now Strawberry will reload the offense at 10. Nearly had it taken away. Blocking foul will go against Hobbs. And for Chris, that's his second person. Good play here. You see Hobbs can see the play developing in front of him just a tad late and trying to get over. Good call by the referees. Well, for those of you just joining us, wondering where is everybody here at Little John Coliseum? A winter storm watch in effect. Freezing rain started very early this morning after a near 70 degree day here yesterday. And apparently it is getting very, very bad on the roads outside. You know you're in trouble when the Weather Channel is standing out front of the arena. Jim Cantori there with the reports. <laughs> What did I do to deserve it? <laughs> Strawberry. 
Hitting one of two. And nearly a takeaway. It is a Maryland takeaway. Kaner Medley walks. The pace of the game dictating turnovers. And uh, I think if you're Clemson, uh, um, too much dribbling going on right now. And Maryland able to get in and get the turnover. They've got to do it with short, crisp passes. Christie nearly threw that one away. Robinson pulls up, tough leaner in the lane, and rattles it in. All right, see what Maryland's trying to do, dictate pace. They want to get Clemson in a hurry-up mode, even when they get in the half court, to get them to take a quick shot. And Robinson able to knock it down. Clemson 8-8 eight and eight on the season. We told you all eight of the Tigers' wins have come here at home. Jones off the screen. Too strong. Last touch by Maryland. Hassan Fafana has checked in for the first time. We talked about Maryland. Maryland turnovers have been a problem for the Terps as well. Yeah, a little Jekyll and Hyde at home and our uh, in-conference and non-conference. You know, non-conference a plus four. Conference games a minus four. And that's just better teams, better defense. Yeah. So, although, you know, Maryland has had some pretty good non-conference games as well. But uh, in the aggregate, a little bit better competition. Well, there's some big bodies hitting the floor right there. Fafana, Babalola, Steve Allen goes 6'10", 230. Well, Fafana earned his playing time in practice. He's really been playing well recently uh, in practice, and they need his big body, especially in this game. For the offensive blast goes Mike Jones for his first basket. Well, Jones, too, has, has come on, didn't play much earlier in the year. Was really behind a little bit defensively, but has since caught up. Gary Williams getting much more confidence in him. Oliver Purnell says, hold on a minute. 9.16 left. Oliver Purnell pulling the freshman Vernon Hamilton a moment ago. Now he says to Hamilton, get back in there. They've done a nice job of kind of massaging him through this tough time. He's had a tough stretch of games. We talk about the competition that he's played, and uh, it's just a learning experience. And this is what Oliver Purnell has said about his freshman point guard. Well, there have been a few ups and downs, but I think by and large it's been positive. Uh, you know, he's a guy that has the intangibles, I think, to be a leader. Uh, and I think those things come through sometimes. The freshman-itis uh, comes through uh, sometimes. But uh, it's been pretty much as I, I, I've expected. I mean, he's had games that, Mike, you touched on it earlier, against Boston College, nearly a triple-double, 13, 11, 9 assists. Against Wake Forest, 17 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists. So the talent and the game is clearly there. Well, in Wake Forest, he's playing against another freshman in Chris Paul, so a guy who's his peer. But it makes a huge difference. All the other good point guards are sophomores and are more seasoned, and that, that one year makes a big difference. Well, now the Maryland pressure beginning to get to Clemson. Seven Tiger turnover. And that's seven in the last six minutes. They only had one at the 15 minute mark. Jones whistled for the charge. Hobbs already with 2,000, yet stuck his nose in there to take that hit. And picked up his second foul in the same fashion, trying to take the charge, but much better. Getting over, closing out the baseline. Jones trying to get himself ignited offensively, maybe tried to force something that wasn't there. Another turnover. Strawberry to the basket, can't finish. And now numbers the other one. Robinson. We'll pull it back out. Hobbs working on Fafana. Had it rejected. And Hamilton gives it back to Hobbs. He'll go to the line. Well, they're really letting the big fellas play inside. A lot of banging going on. We welcome some of you just joining us from around the country. Tom Brenneman, Mike Jeminski, our entire crew here in Little John Coliseum in Clemson, South Carolina, where a rather small crowd is gathered due to terrible weather outside. 
What a good ball game early on. Maryland on the road, desperately needing a win in the conference to avoid slipping to the conference cellar. It's unbelievable to think about that, but that's how uh, how tough the conference is. Gary Williams talked about it. You know, Duke, Duke has separated themselves a little bit, having gone undefeated, but two through nine to every game of war, especially on the road. Lafana can't finish and then follows a shot by laying it in. How about Florida State earlier today? Knocking off Wake Forest. And now he's on Wake Forest. Four losses in a row, and they play Maryland at Wake this week. Wow. Of course, the defending uh, regular season champion, Demon Deacons, began the year unbeaten. Robinson badly misses the three, but knocked out of bounds by Keener Medley. Clemson will get it back. Well, and even though Hamilton's in the game, Robinson spent most of that possession kind of running the offense. 7.34 to play. We've had two ties. We've had 11 lead changes. Sweetheart, I miss you. I miss you too. What did you do today? I played soccer. For your most important calls, yeah. reach out on the wireless service America Trusts. AT&T Wireless. Hey Mike, I know you think your truck is totally sick, but this is what I think of your precious 4x4 hang out all day with your stupid friend's truck! Push it! to know reach out with them mode on the wireless service america trusts at&t wireless my heart goes out to baseball players it's such a dangerous sport i once saw this guy get hit in the leg with a ball it must have hurt because he was limping. NASCAR on Fox. Don't miss the series that has taken Europe by storm. Late night poker on Fox Sports Net, the only place to find it every night. It's keeping Europe up late every night. 10.30, coming your way. Check local listings. Look, the numbers almost identical for both teams. However, Clemson out rebounding the Terrapins 13 to 8 at this point. So, still a huge problem for Gary Williams. A lot of those have been on the offensive glass. When you look at the Maryland personnel, Mike, are you surprised they're having so much trouble at least the last couple of games in that category? Yeah, very much so. I mean, I think Gary Williams feels like he's got a very good rebounding ball club. Maybe not as good as, as you know, in years past. But Tanner Medley good at his position. John Gilchrist, a very good point guard rebounder. The big guys are, are serviceable. So, you know, collectively, uh, they can get the job done, no question. But then what happens, you know, you start to scout. And teams say, hey, we feel like we can really crash the board and all of a sudden it gives you a little more confidence to do it. It almost becomes a, a self-fulfilling prophecy until, until you turn that around and stop it. Man, dropping a prophecy on us. There you go, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do something. It's snowing outside. Christy. Mike Talk, a streaky shooter. If he gets started, look out here tonight. Oh, 
Medley had it stripped away. Good hustle by Mike Jones to keep it alive for Maryland. Well, but Christie really saved that play, and you can see as he's hitting shots, all of a sudden his defensive intensity elevating. Dumping in a low to Smith, who just beat forward along the baseline and lays it in. Smith was six. He's Maryland's leading scorer. Actually just slipped underneath Medley the last game at 14 per. Right, this one underneath, I think they got Jamar Smith, and he's saying, what did I do? Actually, it's a Beckway inside, and uh, fighting with uh, with Sherrod Ford. Ford just battling for position. It is a Beckway, and that will be his second. And that'll be the team's seventh foul, so for the final 6-15 here in the opening half, Clemson will go to the line on every infraction. We talk about the struggles uh, Clemson has offensively. If you take only ACC games, Sherrod Ford is their only double-figure score. So that kind of illustrates, uh, you know, where they are in point production. And then, Mike, you know, you, you look at another way where you can pick up points at the free throw line. Only a 64% free throw shooting team. Ford came in hitting 45 out of 72 on the year. But, but better, we see improvement again. You, yeah. know, you got to look at his last 10, 79%. So that's that's a good trend to follow. And, and as active as he is, he should be getting on the free throw line a lot. And if he, and I think what happens is you become more confident in yourself. You want to go in and get bang and get to the line. You know, if you're shooting poorly, tendency maybe to shy away from contact. Gilchrist has checked back in for the Terrapin. Picked up two fouls in the first six minutes. A little fadeaway and knocking it down. Travis Garrison averages just six a game. He has four in limited time tonight. A nice little pull-out jump shot along the baseline. Uh, had a big hand in that win at Florida. As a matter of fact, his only field goal of the game was the game winner. Force pass inside. Good recovery by Ford to get it back. They go back down to Ford again. He tried to lay it off for Akinbala, and he never saw it coming. Hainer Medley lays it in at the other end for Maryland, and the Terps go back in front by two. Well, Tainer Medley, really athletic, can run the floor. You're right, what happened, Akinbala was expecting Ford to go up with the shot, so he wasn't even looking for the pass. Handle another takeaway, and now two on two the other way. Gilchrist will take it himself. He'll go to the line as he's bumped by Wright. Well, Maryland really getting after it in this man-to-man -man defense. Well, this is what they wanted to have happen to get turnovers and go, and uh, here you see the look inside. But this is not Akinbala's fault. He was just expecting the shot. He had great offensive rebounding position. Sherrod Ford should have somehow found a way to get that out in the rim. But the last two turnovers has resulted in scoring opportunities for Maryland. And we talk about turnovers. It's, uh, it's also where the ball is turned over. And Maryland wanting to be up-tempo, and this is what this pressure defense is, uh, has accomplished for him. Gilchrist has not scored in the game. Averages almost 15 points per game. This sophomore at Virginia Beach, Virginia. Oh, that, the more you watch him, Micah, he, he looks like he has a chance. And I know there's still this year and two more to go, but he looks like he has a chance to be one of the greats at Maryland. No, and, and it's funny, opposite end of the spectrum from Stephen Blake. Different temperament, different type of player. Blake, a pure point guard. Gilchrist, a, a scorer, has that mentality. Gary Williams understands that, but I love his fire and his intensity. And I, 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 you're right, I, I think he can be a special player in this league. You and I had a chance to visit with John earlier today. Very uh, engaging young man. Ten turnovers so far for Clemson. Nine here over the last seven minutes. Babalola for three. Short. And Strawberry lost the handle. May have dribbled it off his own foot. 
Now, good job of the three referees getting it right. Two of them didn't see the play. Weak side official making the good call. And this is a, it was a poor shot selection by Babalo. He's under, he's under duress, and that could have been the first pass to a fast break. That was a good call. It looked like he dribbled it off his own teammate's foot. Yep. Had five players bunched up trying to get back in transition. Babalola, the bounce pass to Hobbs. Reverse layup. Won't go. Maryland ball. Hobbs on the floor wanting the call. I think if he had taken it up on the same side of the basket, he might have got it. When you go underneath, you give that up to a degree. And now Clemson going to turn it up a notch defensively. Well, you brought up earlier about Strawberry not being a point guard. Through his days in high school at modern day in California. And he is running the point now with Gilchrist going back to the bench. Three by McCray won't go down, and now Clemson the other way, trailing by four. 3.40 to play here in the opening half. Akinbala <laughs> claiming he was pushed from behind by Jamar Smith. Instead, he traveled. Now 12 turnovers by Clemson. What do I expect from my new full-size truck? I expect it to be powerful. I expect it to have room for my crew or my family. And it's a Toyota, so I know it'll show up for work every day, like me. Introducing the all-new 2004 Tundra Double Cab, Toyota's biggest truck ever. And now get $12.50 cash back on all 2004 Tundra regular and access cab models. See your local dealer or visit buyatoyota.com today. There's nothing worse than being ready to go and your car won't. So we're ready in advance, ready with the right equipment, the right people, and the right parts, all at ready to go, low prices. And if it's your battery, we'll install it for free. So bring it on. We're ready in advance. For the best parts, people, and drafts, we're ready in advance. Yeah, bring it on. What if it had DVD navigation and laser-assisted cruise control? What if it had a rear view monitor to see what lies behind it? And one of the most advanced all wheel drive systems in the world to propel you ahead. What if has become what is? The FX from Infinity. Tonight on your Southern Sports Report, we'll take you behind the scenes as both teams settle into Super Bowl City. Our Sandra Golden sets the stage, plus Terry Chick sits down with Panthers D lineman Mike Rucker. Your Southern Sports Report tonight at 10. Welcome back to ACC Sunday Night Hoops elsewhere around the nation. Number nine, Kentucky wins at Notre Dame, but it was not easy. Effective, yes, easy, no. Larry's alma mater dodges a bullet. They win 71 to 63. Mike Goldberg with Larry Conley. We're getting set for the Kiosera halftime show. Florida State to beat number 10 Wake Forest. You're going to like this. Would you pick it? Oh, I'll tell you, you are really tough tonight. But I will tell you, one guy will show you when we come back, he's not afraid to throw up that three. Yeah, a couple of minutes away from the Kiosera halftime show. Mike Jaminski, Tom Brenneman. How about Florida State? They knock off two top tens in four days. I won't wafer from my prediction earlier in the year that they would sleeper in oh, three geez. and three. Give me a break. <laughs> well, what a great job, though. Leonard Hamilton is done down in Tallahassee. I mean, anybody that comes down there, they'd be able to be ready to play. That's Maryland. Absolutely. Went down, and I think that's what uh, started. Give him a little confidence in league play. Maryland to turnover. It's been a a sloppy first half in spurts for both teams. 
Clemson handled the pressure very well early on. They've struggled here over the last nine minutes. And now Hamilton dribble penetration picks it up. And they'll reset the offense with 20 on the shot clock. Rice will fire. Short. Babalola not there. And an offensive tip in will go for Christian. Well, he has been very active. You see the confidence, uh, the jump shooting there early, but uh, just getting a hand up. McCray left alone. And he misfires for the second time in the last three Maryland trips. 2.30 to play opening half. Hamilton! The guy with the basketball is the most dangerous person on the floor, and you've got to stop the advance of that man. Maryland seemed confused in transition. It doesn't matter who, Tom, who matches up. You've got to stop the basketball. Great recognition by Hamilton on that play. He was under control under all the way. Look at this. Nobody in red going to the basketball. Garrison looking for help. He can't stop it. A lot of poise in the play for the freshman. We're talking about the Atlantic Coast Conference from top to bottom with Gary Williams a little bit earlier today. We take a look at our Bank of America ACC standings, and Gary made a comment. He said, hey, Duke has clearly proven through the first, nearly first round through the conference that they are the elite team in the conference, but he thinks anybody from two to nine could beat anybody else. Well, you, know, you look, Maryland with the win right back in the middle of the pack today, so that's, that's how close it's going to be. And he said, you know, they asked about the depth top to bottom, and Gary said until somebody steps up and beats Duke and brings them back to the pack. It's, it's you know, that's how it's going to go. And Duke has just been played brilliantly. Well, really defending like they, they did a number of years ago. And, and that's been the difference in the ball club. Just really dismantled the Georgetown team that's obviously down. But still, they night in, night out, they are bringing the effort in the defensive end of the floor. Smith falling down. Tried to avoid the traveling violation and threw it away. Gilchrist clearly frustrated tonight. Got the two fouls, which put him on the bench for most of this half. Well, you talked about it. I mean, they are turning Clemson over and dictating it defensively, but offensively, they are having trouble with their execution. Almost getting in a hurry up mode in their own right. Hamilton the floater. Weiss got a hand on it, but Gilchrist the rebound. Goes behind the back. And missed it. See, Bill Chris will try to do that, too. If things are not going well, down at Georgia Tech, he tried to put the team on his back at 27 points, but uh, he will look to go all the way. Boy, working on Smith. Kicks it out to Christie. He's short, and Ford will be called over the back. Five times, 13 lead changes. The Terrapins' largest lead has been four. Clemson's largest lead, three. A pretty balanced scoring so far, but that's been a story really all year long for Clemson. No, no question that Christie, the X Factor here, if he can uh, reignite here, start knocking down some jump shots, but nice production off the bench as well. Eight points. Uh, Akinbala coming in doing a nice job. Six different Tigers have led them in scoring this season. And Fafana trap. What a bickering going on between the Maryland players right now, Tom. You're right. They're, 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 they're very frustrated, and they're, they're taking it out on one another. Maryland now with nine turnovers here in the first half. Hamilton, nice penetration. And a foul. Lockenbala will go to the line. Uh, I'll tell you what. Well, maybe... Maybe the, the coming in off the bench is the thing that Vernon Hamilton needed. He is much more poised, and, and that's Akinbala's game right now. A little unrefined in the post, but he can play off penetration and finish at the rim. First time I've really seen this guy get some uh, significant minutes, Akinbala. And you're right, Mike. I mean, clearly, he's able to give them uh, some athleticism underneath the basket. He's got a lot of hands on balls coming off the offensive glass. Yeah, long arms, very active, and uh, they've got to like his upside and his ability to get better. It's a free throw. Clemson by two, under a minute to play here in the opening half. McCray had it stripped away by Hamilton. And now Hamilton at the other end. Now, Vernon Hamilton 
playing against another freshman energized in this game. Rice, whistle for the foul, and that's his third. That's a shame. And Strawberry makes a nice defensive play, but uh, Rice trying to do a little bit too much. Nice digging in there. But watch Bob Alola finish at the rim. He's lost a few pounds from last year. The guy is the best defender they have on the team. But showed you as his athleticism. And he and Akimbala, your two favorite guys, getting it done. No doubt about it. The Kiyosera halftime report coming up with Mike Goldberg and Larry Conley. Bringing up to speed on that Florida State win over Wake Forest. And the Fighting Irish and the Kentucky Wildcats getting together. Last second try. No good by McCray. Pretty solid effort by Clemson. A 31-27 lead here at halftime. Even with the turnovers, they finished with an 8-0 run, and they really brought the energy to this game, Tom. Well, you made a great point, though, Mike. Some of the Maryland players seem to be having a problem getting on the same page here. You can bet Gary Williams will address that. Mike and Larry standing by in Atlanta. 31-27 at the half. All right, we've got ourselves a basketball game. Welcome to the Kiyosara Halftime Show. Alongside the veteran Larry Conley, I'm Mike Goldberg. Up next, we will go on the break with the elitists, members of the top ten. How about number five Louisville coming off a big win over Cincinnati? How would they respond? Number nine, Kentucky under the Golden Dome. Number ten, Wake Forest tries to stop the bleeding. Scores and highlights just two minutes away on the Kiyosara Halftime Show. Introducing the Kyocera SL300R with exclusive R2 technology. It powers up in less than a second. It shoots the moment you press the shutter button. And it captures picture after beautiful picture at a blazing three and a half frames a second until your memory card is full. As our friends in Japan say, instant victory, which probably makes a lot more sense in Japan. Kyocera SL300R, the fastest digital camera on the planet. Kyocera. Instant victory! There's glory for the individuals who come together for a common goal. You tame the elusive beast of time and space, bringing together offices from every corner of the globe, working in real time as if shoulder to shoulder. You have the new Microsoft Office System. Go team! The 265 horsepower Nissan Maxima. Have you ever stolen any money? He's, he's doing it. She's planning it. Do you think I'm that easy? Uh-huh. He's controlling all of it. Getting in deep, aren't you? The Big Bounce, rated PG-13. Get a room. Starts Friday, January 30th. You see a patient coping with arthritis. At Franklin Templeton, we saw a reason to invest early in what became the world's largest biotech company. Providing healthy returns for fund shareholders by spotting growth opportunities ahead of the pack requires a unique perspective, one that's made Franklin a leading equity fund manager for over 50 years. Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective. Some people say that their car is a form of self-expression. In that case, there's no better way than AutoZone to get the parts, accessories, and help you need to express yourself. So get in the zone. AutoZone. Totally Football. Insider Jay Glazer breaks the story before anyone else. Totally Football. Weeknights on Fox Sports Net. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by Kyocera, the new value frontier. By Microsoft. Your potential, our passion. By WebMD, redefining modern medicine. And by Staples. That was easy.
Larry, in honor of your 60th and Bluegrass Week, we're going to go around your home state. We'll start with number five, Louisville to Tennessee, and Louisville's struggling a little bit. Yes, they are. Uh, they're losing right now 22 to 16 to Tennessee. Uh, Luke Whitehead, the leading rebounder for Louisville, and C.J. Watson with the runner for Buzz Peterson's club. And your alma mater, number nine, Kentucky at Notre Dame. Notre Dame late on this. Jordan Cornette follow would pull it within three. Kentucky never seals anything easily. Kalein Azabuke with a good finish right here, though, as Kentucky gets a win in South Bend. 21 points for Chuck Hayes. Number 10, Wake at Florida State. Second half, Seminoles, Tim Pickett takes over. Tim Pickett seems to like the second half. Uh, he did the same thing in North Carolina, and again tonight, four of eight from beyond that three-point line, and the crowd storms the floor. Loving it at Leon County Civic Center. Pickett with 18. Back to number five, Louisville. They demolished and embarrassed formerly unbeaten Cincinnati midweek. Is there a Bearcat hangover tonight? Well, there very well could be, but it's also a Louisville team that I think has a lot of good uh, positive aspects to their club. One thing is they've got a great full court press, but I think their best defense is their half court defense. They are number two in the nation in field goal percentage defense. They just choke you off and don't allow you to get a good look at the basket. Rick Pitino putting together a great season. He's already won at Kentucky. Our game in Clemson, South Carolina, Death Valley. Uh, Death Valley, and uh, you know what? Everybody is sharing the wealth here. Clemson with eight different scores in the first half, including Akin Akinbala with the jam. Two point game. This is the Kiyosara halftime show. Introducing the all new Dodge Durango. With all new power, all new room, all new ride, all new interior, all new capability. All new safety features, all new capacity. One part power, one part comfort. One all new Durango, starting under 26.6. See it at your local Dodge dealer today. Nothing worse than being ready to go and your car won't. So we're ready in advance. Ready with the right equipment, the right people, and the right parts. All at ready to go, low prices. And if it's your battery, we'll install it for free. So bring it on. We're ready in advance. For the best parts, people, and props, we're ready in advance. Yeah, bring it on. On the next Beyond the Glory, Rusty Wallace has been through it all in his illustrious career. Overcoming stereotypes. If you wanted to drive race cars, you were supposed to be from the South. A strained personal life. The honeymoon was going to the racetrack, and she was probably in the back of the truck. And the feud with NASCAR's Golden Boy. I loved it when I beat Rusty, and Rusty loved it when he beat me. The triumphant road of a racing legend. Rusty Wallace, Beyond the Glory, tonight on Fox Sports Net. Wednesday on Countdown to Signing Day, it's Commitment Wednesday as four of the nation's elite All-South recruits will be announcing their college decisions live in studio. First up, it's D.L. Aaron Jones, followed by athlete extraordinaire Kenny Ingram. Next, will it be the Tide or the Dogs for D.L. Lorenzo Washington? Then, O.L. Leon Hart announces his big decision. Plus, special guest Xavier Carter. Wednesday at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to the Kiyosara Halftime Show. On a frigid night in Clemson, South Carolina, we have ourselves a good basketball game. Clemson and Maryland, a four-point lead for the Tigers. Eight have scored for Clemson, nine have scored for Maryland. Our Super Bowl Sunday edition of ACC Sunday Night Hoops next week comes from College Park. The Maryland Terrapins host high-flying Julius Hodge and NC State. It gets started at 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific time. There's regular or quad cap. Hmm. 1500 or heavy duty. Man. Cummins Diesel or Hemi. I can't decide. And 0% financing plus a cash allowance. Plus cash? Give me the Red Ram 1500 quad cap with a 5.7 liter Hemi. Announcing Zero Plus, a groundbreaking offer of 0% financing plus a $2,000 cash allowance on Dodge Ram. Plus our seven year or 70,000 mile powertrain limited warranty. Hurry, Zero Plus just made the best values in America even better. <laughs> Doesn't stop.
stand a chance For the best parts People and brass We're ready in advance Yeah, bring it on Preparing for winter These docile little fellows Savour a tasty feast Ever alert at the first sign of danger, they react. Wrap your paws around Taco Bell's new 99-cent cheesy bean and rice burrito. It's a full half pound and loaded with three cheeses, fiesta sauce, and a cheesy zesty kick. Now 99 cents is tasty and filling. When you think outside the bun. Introducing Fox Sports Net e-alert, an email tune-in reminder delivered directly to your computer whenever your favorite SEC, ACC, or Southern professional team will be playing live or prominently featured on any of our numerous Southern sports shows. Register at foxsports.com keyword south. Click on the e-alert icon at the top of the page and select only the teams and only the sports that interest you. The registration is fast, very simple, and free. E-alert. Register today. Weeknights, it's a who's who on the best damn sports show, period. It's a fact! It's the clubhouse for Hollywood and all the famous. Please welcome The Rock, Pamela Anderson, Chris Rock, Jesse Jackson, Cuba Gooding Jr. Where anything can and will happen. This is too good and too much fun. You just move your hips in a circle. That is must see T busy right there. Weeknights on Fox Sports Net. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to the Kyocera Halftime Show. Truly frigid night in Clemson, South Carolina, but the home standing Tigers lead by four. Shea Christie with seven points for Clemson. Nick Kaner Medley leading the way with six for Maryland. Elsewhere to the Big 12. Number 12, Kansas hosting Colorado. Kansas trying to rebound after that loss to Richmond. Here's Jeff Hawkins with a steal. A sweet pass to Keith Langford who lays it in. Wayne Simeon with 20, and he held Colorado's David Harrison to five. Kansas wins big 78 to 50. Oregon at number 14, Arizona freshman Mustafa Shakur. Alley you pass to Hassan Adams. I think one of the really outstanding players in the Pac-10, Lou Olson. Very happy about that one. Set on the tip-off show, Larry. Give it and receive it. How about Shakur goes up, throws it down. Fourth straight game, scoring 90 points for the top-scoring team in the nation. Arizona, number 23, Purdue at home against Michigan State. Spartans with a chance to win in regulation. Yeah, look what happens. Ball gets stuck right in the corner where the backboard and the rim come together and they go to overtime. And in overtime, the homestanding Boilermakers take over. Kenneth Lowe leads the way with 18 points. Purdue wins 76 to 70. Back to our game, Maryland and Clemson. We saw some frustration from Gary Williams. Also, poor shooting once again for Maryland. How can they correct that? Well, Mike, it's a great question because Maryland has struggled shooting the basketball this year. And tonight, they are 0 for 4 from beyond that three-point line. This is a Maryland team that while they are very strong in rebounding or have been this year, it has been different. Yes, it certainly has. Let's see what they can do to right their ship. It's, uh, truly, they were fighting amongst themselves. John Gilchrist, he's always fiery. He, he's not Stephen Blake. He shows his emotions, as does that man, the head coach, Gary Williams. Back out to Tom Brenneman, J Mike Jaminski for the second half. This has been the Kyocera Halftime Show. What do I expect from my new full-size truck? I expect it to be powerful. I expect it to have room for my crew or my family. And it's a Toyota, so I know it'll show up for work every day, like me. Introducing the all-new 2004 Tundra Double Cab, Toyota's biggest truck ever. And now get $12.50 cash back on all 2004 Tundra regular and access cab models. See your local dealer or visit buyatoyota.com today. On the next Beyond the Glory. Rusty Wallace has been through it all in his illustrious career, overcoming stereotypes. If you wanted to drive race cars, you were supposed to be from this house. A strained personal life. The honeymoon was going to the racetrack, and she was probably in the back of the truck. And the feud with NASCAR's Golden Boy. I loved it when I beat Rusty, and Rusty loved it when he beat me. The triumphant road of a racing legend. Rusty Wallace, Beyond the Glory, tonight on Fox Sports Net. What's that? The wireless bill. Frustrated with your high wireless bill? 
take your number to a better place. Call 1-800-T-MOBILE and get the best value in wireless. And now get T-Mobile three-day weekends with unlimited calling. T-Mobile. Get more. The all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. It's a who's who on the best damn sports show, period. It's the clubhouse for Hollywood and Hall of Famers. Weeknights and late night on Fox Sports Net. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Staples. That was easy. And brought to you in part by T-Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. And by Bank of America, setting higher standards. Welcome back to Clemson, South Carolina. Our Keo Serra first half stats. Mike, what jumps out at you? Big number rebounding again. That's how Clemson has stayed in this game. 20 to 13. 10 of those offensive, and they've gotten 12 second chance points. If you count the 12 points that they've got off turnovers, that's most of their offense. Just in hustle plays, Gary Williams is going to be very upset about that. You know, you talked about it as we were going to the intermission about Gary Williams was clearly upset. Mike and Larry talked about it. Some of the players seemed to be either upset with one another or what was going on. What do you think Gary Williams had to say to him at halftime? Right. Get everybody on the same page first. Channel your emotions at the opponent instead of each other. And then I think a lot of this falls on John Gilchrist. Uh, this may be an opportunity for him to step forward and say, hey, my team, let's go. Let's let's do our thing out there. Gilchrist in foul trouble for most of the first half, limited to just two points, and they both came from the free throw line. So here we go. Clemson will get it to begin. The second 20 minutes with a four-point lead. And for Clemson, that was a huge confidence boost that first 20 minutes, especially the way they finished and began the second half. Olu Babalola laying it in with a left hand. Clemson's largest lead of the game. And Babalola nearly with a takeaway. And it is a turnover. I tell you, the last five or six minutes of the first half in the beginning here, Clemson has been the team setting the tone defensively and offensively. They are carrying the fight to Maryland. Again, Vernon Hamilton begins the second half as he did the ball game, sitting on the bench. Oliver Purnell had used the same starting lineup for each of the first 16 games until tonight. Robinson replaced Hamilton. And Robinson fired. That's a two. Gilchrist taking a chance on that play. Got overextended defensively. Ibekwe. Gone. Okay, Ibekwe can't make that play. He's not a guy that's going to make it create off the dribble. This is just real patience. Maynard, intermittently, you got to close out under control on that play. Now, even though Babalola is a right-handed player, he loves to go left. You've got to understand that, but Kaner Medley went flying out there, and there was no way that he could stop the drive. He backed the immediate replaced into a traveling violation on the inbound. Thirteen turnovers for the Clemson Tigers, and off the inbounds, Ward fell asleep, and Smith lays it in. Just a little cross screen, and that, that can be dangerous, and uh, frustrating for a coach when you give up a play like that on an underneath out of bounds. And then a turnover, and Kaner Medley lays it in. Back-to-back -back turnovers on possessions by the Tigers, and they call timeout. It's amazing how quickly things can change, Tom. Maryland with the upper hand in a flurry. So, you want to open a checking account? Yes, but I don't want to pay for it. Right. And you want online banking? Right, if it's free. And unlimited online bill paying? I don't want to have to pay for that either. No, no. 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 So, you want total security protection on your check card, free? Look, I just don't think I should have to pay for any of it. Neither do we. 
Free checking plus, plus, plus with direct deposit from Bank of America. Higher standards. 48 microprocessors for speed. Voice recognition for ease. And satellite tracking in case of theft or emergency. Or if you just want a good seafood restaurant. The technologically advanced Acura RL. Whether you measure it in horsepower or gigabytes. Passage is intense, but if you complete the journey, you will find your destiny among the world's greatest warriors. The few, the proud, the Marines. This team does not have margin for error. We've had some teams in the last couple years where we didn't have to be at our best for 40 minutes all the time. This team has to do that. We. We struggle to score sometimes. There, there's no doubt about it. So if our defense slips up, if our rebounding's not there, when we tr struggle to score, we're, we're in trouble. But as long as we can play defense and rebound, that keeps us in the game till we can find a way to score. Rebounding wasn't there on Wednesday against the Duke Blue Devils. Same story so far here tonight. Uh, 14 rebounds combined. You see the six uh, here, and uh, Clemson still with the upper hand there. But Oliver Purnell, good timeout. They've got to get on the same page now how to defeat the pressure here, make sure that they get the ball in correctly. Everybody's in their spot. Once again, the Terrapins picking up full court pressure. Get it to Babalola, immediately trapped, tries to split the trap, lost the handle, and Clemson comes away with a loose ball. Well, uh, even in, in full court and half court, Clemson's been getting caught in the corners on the trap, Tom. It's awfully tough to play out of that. Much better if you try to get the ball in the middle of the floor. Robinson from the corner buries a big three. That's a big shot. You wonder how much confidence he gained by getting the start tonight. It certainly has energized his offense. He's four or five. Painter Medley kisses it in. He'll go to the line. Painter Medley now with 10. Talk about his second half against Duke. 13 of his 21 points in the last nine minutes of that game. And again, when he can seal and get to that left hand inside, he normally finishes. Babalola picking up his first, Keener Medley. Scored in a double figures now 12 times this season after averaging just five points per game last year. You know, amazingly, time you look at him, he's got more starts in his career than any player on the Maryland team as a sophomore. It's amazing. Started 18 games last year. That's what Gary Williams was talking about. You know, the margin of error with a young team, mm -hmm. you don't have it. That's that's where it goes. That's what seniors and veterans give you that little bit of a margin night in and night out. Nice bounce pass by Hobbs down low to Christie, and he was fouled on the way up. Travis Garrison whistled for the foul. That'll be his first. And Christie going to the free throw line. Well, defense certainly one of the staples of the Maryland program under Gary Williams, second only to Connecticut in opponents field goal percentage. Way to take it back. Those top two teams have won national championships recently. So any surprise that the defense equals championships and uh, a lot and, of wins on that board. Yeah, and many feel Cincinnati is going to be right there at the end of the year uh, this year, despite the, the loss that uh, at Louisville and uh, Pittsburgh playing very well despite Man. despite losing Ben Howland. So nice job there. Well, I had a chance to watch Pitt play a little bit last night against Syracuse. They manhandled the Orangemen at the Carrier Dome. It's a tough place to go and win, and then it's, it seems like every time Jim Bayham is playing, it's at home. Yeah. Is that team ever going to go on the road? <laughs> Garrison, the offensive rebound, forced up the shot, contact, no whistle. Garrison thought he was fouled. It's Clemson ball. And Gary Williams saying, uh, my guy was bumped. It's a man's game inside tonight. Two big physical front lines going at it. 
Now Lamar Rice, who got significant playing time in the first half, will come off the bench. A transfer from Mock Community College. And the first ever basketball scholarship given to a player who hails from the state of Michigan here at Clemson. Forced it up there. Trying to get the offensive rebound, but corralled by Smith. And nearly turned over by Maryland. They have numbers the other way. Gilchrist coast to coast and lays it in. I remember I talked earlier about stopping the dribble, especially with John Gilchrist. I mean, he has got a knack for doing that. Foul called on Garrison. And a bailout foul, too. I know, Garrison, you're trying to be active in the double team, but they really had Shawan Robinson dead on the sideline. If they had just stayed, stayed in control, they could have gotten a 10-second count. Akin Nakanbala, who gave him terrific minutes in the first half, comes on to replace Sherrod Ford. Akinbala, six points. He only averages four per game. Hamilton weaving his way through the lane. And a turnover by Clemson. Well, is it, it might, is there, are there are bodies on the floor in every possession in this game. Now 15 turnovers for the Tigers. Maryland with 12. Press pump by Akinbala. Crowd doesn't like it. That's effective if you can get an athletic long guy in the front of your press. Akinbala is that, but he got into trouble when he tried to reach on a guard, and there's not many times a big player is going to get that call. Of course, they uh, refurbished the Little John Coliseum last year. Mike, you and I were here earlier today. They have done a fabulous job with this building. Small crowd tonight because of the weather and the storm taking place. But what a great building. And it's tough to refurbish and do it well. I mean, it's easy to blow it all up and build a completely new building. Tanner Medley calling the timeout. I tell you, Oliver Purnell, and then you, you brought it up earlier. I think you and I both agree he is going to get it turned around here in Clemson. If and when he does, they'll be packing him in this place. Right, and he's, you know what? The, the big key really was the, the AD here, uh, Phillips, Derry Don Phillips, who's, uh, who's made a commitment to Clemson basketball. Oliver Purnell has had a couple of opportunities to take this job in the past, turned away because he didn't think that commitment was there, but much different story now. Take a look at our Bank of America top 10 this week. Duke will remain number one. Stanford remains unbeaten after winning earlier. St. Joe's, along with Stanford, the only two unbeatens left in Division One. UConn got beat earlier in the week. Louisville knocked off Cincinnati. North Carolina lost earlier in the week. Pitt should move up. And there you see Wake Forest, which lost again today, four in a row after starting the year 11-0. <laughs> we talked. They are going to be in a surly mood when Maryland comes to town this week. Gilchrist, the offensive rebound, was fouled on the way up. He'll go to the line. There's many more fouls now, pardon me, Mike, on Lamar Rice. In many ways, you know, Gilchrist, one of their better offensive rebounders, and uh, talked about maybe letting him go to the glass and getting other guards like McCray back in rotation defensively. Been a quiet game for Gilchrist. Gilchrist, Kaner Medley, and Jamar Smith each average 14 points per game. And every player that has played in the game so far for both teams has scored. Timeout on the floor. We're knotted up. 38 apiece. Just under 16 minutes to go at Little John.
race inspired. The six-speed, 200 horsepower Acura RSX Type S. Whoa, digital widescreen high-definition TVs with digital auto convergence and HD component video inputs, plus high-speed velocity scan modulation. Don't touch. Hey guys, check out the game in high def. Sweet. Now pay no interest for two years or get 10% off all TVs $299 and up. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. Best Buy. Introducing Duralast Tools. Professional grade tools, precision engineered to take on the toughest jobs. And backed by a serious lifetime guarantee. No questions asked. New Duralast Tools. Only at AutoZone. online free with free checking from Bank of America higher standards tonight the first time all year the freshman from Richmond Virginia Vernon Hamilton not in the Clemson starting lineup although coming off the bench he's given him quality minutes knows all about discipline went to Benedictine High School in Richmond Virginia Catholic military school Star athlete at both football and basketball. And after committing to Clemson, Mike, he even wore Tiger shorts under his high school uniform last year for the cadets. Got like that. And he has uh, really responded. I thought he's been poised. Got the score inside. Three assists on the game. Only one turnover, which was the big key. We talked about the 11 in the last two games. But I, I think that's a great move by Oliver Purnell to really take the pressure off of him. Get him out of the starting lineup. No question he's going to play a lot of minutes in this game. Maryland on a 7-0 run over the last two and a half minutes. We have our sixth tie. We've had 14 lead changes. Foul underneath will be called against Jamar Smith. Not happy at all with that call. And for Smith, that'll be his second. Now number three, I beg your pardon. It is his second. Threw it away. They're tough on that play. He tried to make something off the dribble. Again, you got to you have to stay within yourself. And uh, I think Hobbs got caught up in the high post, needed to pass out and work out of the offense that way. Press defended by Hamilton, both native Virginians. Olivia Hamilton from Richmond. And Bill Chris from Virginia Beach, Salem High School. Here's a little leaner. Battle for the rebound. The Tigers have it. Nearly threw it away. No, it'll go the other way. The officials initially pointing Maryland ball and then saying, no, my bad. And really, Babalola made that play. Medler, Gainer Medley was in a good position to offensive rebound, but uh, Babalola knocked it out of his hands. using all of the 10 seconds to get the ball over half court a lot of the evening. Robinson missing the leader in the lane. Offensive rebound by Shawan Robinson. Abalola muscles his way to the basket. Pretty athletic move. Talked about that left hand. Righty likes to go that way. He's got a little bit of a strength advantage over Kane Medley. Not the shot Maryland was looking for there by Garrison. Possession arrow will give it back to Maryland. 
No, you're right on that. Gar Garrison pulling the trigger too quickly on that play, but what a great left ball. You get that, get your head and shoulders by the defender. You've got nothing but open lane in front of you. And he is a low 6'6", 242. Gilchrist trapped in the corner, has to spend a timeout. Corners are death. I mean, that's, you know, you throw it there, you're just inviting the other team to come in and double team and trap you. Good solid fundamentals by Clemson. Well, coming your way February the 22nd, the world's best drivers return to Fox for the Subway 400 at The Rock. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart and company lead the field 17 weeks of NASCAR coverage. It begins February 22nd with a Subway 400 only on Fox. Well, next weekend we will have a chance to see the Maryland Terrapins once again. Our ACC Sunday Night Hoops caravan will make its way to College Park, NC State in Maryland. Great win for State yesterday against Georgia Tech, Tom. 41 three-point attempts in that game for State. However, they are a much different team on the road. They scored 20 points less away from RBC. And uh, by the way, as a footnote, next Sunday, a special starting time at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Go Panthers. Well, you called me a home. <laughs> Hamilton lays it in. The longer Clemson stays in this game, and the more Vernon Hamilton scores, the more confidence they will have. Good look ahead against the pressure. And Jamar Smith has had a tough game in this so far, and uh, well, Hamilton, he didn't need much room on that play. Just cut right in, kind of fearless taking on the center. Hamilton, the conventional three-point play, gives Clemson a five-point lead. Slow getting into its offense. Well, and you look, it's probably a lineup on the floor that hasn't had a lot of court time and game action. Uh, you know, so Fafana has not played a whole lot. Uh, you know, Strawberry's out there along with Gilchrist. Foul call on Shawan Robinson. That's his second. And the team fourth against Clemson. Good pass from Tanner Medley underneath. Just handled by Strawberry, who's looking to, for ways to score before he was able to catch. Now both of these teams could wind up with 25 turnovers in this game, the way it's going. And an offensive foul will go against Akinbala. Well, and you got a second. You got to wonder for Maryland when the search sense of urgency is going to come in here. You know, they've, they've lost uh, two games. Then you see the shooting percentages tonight 39%. The last two games, their losses, um, and you know they understand the magnitude of it. We were looking, you know, Gary Williams was really upbeat and kind of almost jovial at shoot around today, and I had the sense that he was trying to take some of the pressure off off this team. And they, the players, know they lose and they're in the in last place in the conference. That you and I thought it was a, a terrific strategy yeah. by Coach Williams and a very young team. Absolutely, try to, to take that weight off his shoulders. I mean, he understands. I mean, he's, he's had a team that's lost five straight conference games and have gone to the Final Four. But uh, you know, five, nine, nine sophomores and freshmen might not understand that. Yep. The second youngest team in the country. Shot clock at two and banked in for three. Maybe that will get Maryland started. Might even die. I mean, Akinbala had one early on, so, you know, those, those things, those types of shots tend to even out. Wow, just like that, the five-point lead down to a deuce. Twelve minutes to play in Clemson. Boy, the little jumper won't go down, but a long rebound comes out to Hamilton. 
Ford only one of four in this game. Five points. He's got a soft touch, Tom. He's just kind of waiting for him to break out, have a big scoring night. Hamilton turns it over, got caught in the air. Strawberry leads the break, and McRae lays it in, and we are tied at 43. And he did a nice job to get that ball up. He kind of caught it on his shoulder and almost looked like he traveled. Oliver Purnell wants a timeout. Seven ties so far in this one. To go with 14 lead changes. And how about this? Shot clock running down to two. Gilchrist has to let it fly and banks it in. Is that the oh. ATM or the bank? <laughs> <laughs> You know it's tough playing for Gary when you fire one in and you get that reaction. Uh, he is some, you know, his, his demeanor at shoot around notwithstanding, this is what you're going to see most nights on the sidelines from Gary Williams. That yeah, great article, in fact, uh, written about this theatrics along the sideline in the Washington Post earlier today. Gotta let it out. Can't keep that stuff bottled in. To, to do a Maryland game, just to spend time during the shoot around with Coach Williams. Uh, it's, you know, and all the coaches in this league yep. very accommodating with us, top to bottom. You know, all of the new, and he's great. And good to see. Makes our job a heck of a lot easier. Absolutely. And you can see why kids want to come play for each and every one of them. There's a bump by Baba Lola. Timeout on the floor, 11.03 to play in the game. We are tied at 43. Whoa, my high school reunion's coming up. Let's knock them dead. Go, 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 go. Yoga on Friday? Everybody's doing it. <laughs> Three, four, and six. Very sharp. I got invited to an after party. Can you bring a friend? Life's better with the butterfly. Come see all the ways you can get more done at msn.com. What? Bad news. You're no longer the wingmaster. Tender, juicy, and smothered in our special honey barbecue sauce. KFC Honey Barbecue Wings, the sauciest wings around. Say it. Get seven for $2.99 or 20 for $7.99. To get the taste on your face, go KFC. The 260 horsepower Infiniti G35, one of car and driver's 10 best for two years running. A dream to drive, the Infiniti G35. DVD navigation keyless ignition, and laser-assisted cruise control. Are we getting ahead of ourselves? Or is everyone else standing still? The FX from Infinity. Mike Goldberg in our Atlanta studios. Welcome back to ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Elsewhere, number five Louisville is at Tennessee. Cardinals Larry O'Bannon, the jumper, and he is fouled. A close basketball game. Louisville is being pushed in Knoxville. They trail in the second half by five. Meantime, in Death Valley, Clemson and Maryland, battle of the boards, guys, just like you anticipated. And uh, actually, Maryland getting back into it on the glass in the second half. They were out rebounded by seven in the half. Only down three right now, although uh, Clemson defending very well, keeping Maryland at 42%. And uh, I'll say it again, as this game goes along, and Clemson can stay in it, the confidence will grow. You're up to date, thanks to our Toyota game summary. Each team in the high 40s, a shooting percentage. Hamilton defending Gilchrist. Gray along 
the baseline. The reverse way in will fall. Now Christie gave up the baseline that time. There's just no way the defense can come and help you in that situation. Time you look at it for the last 10 minutes, and this is going to be a game of poise and concentration for Clemson. They've been facing this pressure for 30 minutes now. They've got to finish it out, and that's that's sometimes what pressure is. It's a war of attrition. Christie. This is a three. Fafana fights for the rebound, and the big fella comes away with it. He is big. Oh, is he ever? Eats up the paint. And a three by McCray. He has back-to-back -back buckets, seven here in the second half. It's amazing what the drive can do. It can set up your offensive game. All of a sudden, the basket looks a little bit bigger. And then Christie. Trying to lay it off for Sherrod Ford. Ford needs to get more involved. You brought it up a moment ago. And he's got that capability, but here are these, all of a sudden, these jump shots get a little bit tougher to make. And look at Fofana. That's mine. That round ball is mine. Looks like the big man was chasing some chow. McCray again. Too strong. Offensive rebound ripped out of there by DJ Strawberry. Offensive rebound by the big man. that I'd want to chest bump him too hard. No. But Fofana getting it done on both ends of the floor. And here, this is a benefit to Strawberry making the play. And then once on, a, on an offensive rebound, the play gets a little strat fractured. You kind of lose track of where people are. A nice little soft touch there. Fofana listed at 6'10", 290. But the proverbial biscuit away yeah. from 300. He's got a friend in media relations for sure. When you were listed at 290. When you're that big, who cares? <laughs> Who's going to argue with you? Right. What, are they going to make fun of you? <laughs> they break the pressure, don't attack the basket. Under 10 to play, bounce it in there to Hobbs. The lone senior scholarship player on this Clemson team. Tigers need a bucket and a foul on Fafana. Well, you talk, you know, beating the pressure, but I think what Clemson, they want to beat the pressure, then pull it back, work through their offense, work the clock. They don't want to get into a hurry-up type situation. That's exactly what Maryland wants them to do. 9-0 run has given Maryland this seven-point lead. Turns fell behind. Last many is seven here in the second half. Hamilton left alone for three. And Ford tries to run it down. Out of bounds. Maryland will get it back. Like you brought it up a moment ago, the turnaround in the rebounding category in the second half for Maryland. Well, and especially they, they caught up there, and there's the offensive rebounds. Only two for Clemson in the first 10 minutes. They had 13 in the first 20. So Clemson missing shots, but Maryland sealing the deal by getting possession of the ball. Maryland turns it right back over. I think somehow Clemson's got to get to the basket. And the long jump shots, they're, they're not able to knock them down. They're not getting the rebounds. I think more things can happen to them that are positive that they somehow get into the paint. Under nine minutes to play now. And a seven-point Maryland lead. Ops calling for it down low. And again, Fofana pushes him in the back. Couple of heavyweights locking up under there. Talked about Fofana. Hobbs goes 6 7 2 60. Now, and Fofana pleading his case, but freshman, you're not going to win many arguments with the referees in this league. You talked about it too. Hobbs doing a nice job, not really getting his arms wrapped around so he could pick up the foul, but uh, having a little conversation afterwards. And then Hobbs badly missing on the free throw attempt. Told you, neither one of these teams very good at all from the free throw line. Maryland at 60%. 
That would be the lowest ever for a Maryland team in a season. The worst ever was 61% in the 52-53 season. Last touch by Clemson. Well, it has not been a pretty game so far for both sides. You know, they've had flashes of brilliance, but uh, basically a lot of turnovers for both sides. Very physical game. And that's actually, it's, you know, it works to Clemson's advantage. If that play is out, it's the, it's the type of game that they can win. It's just that if Maryland gets out and runs and gets in transition, that's where they, they can't keep up with it. Maryland coming into this one, one and three in the conference. A loss would put them three games under 500. And in ninth place in the ACC, traveling violation against Strawberry. Now 15 Maryland turnovers. Trying to get back into this game. We have not called his name in a long, long time. Sherrod Ford averages 11. He only has one field goal. He'll press the miss, but batted back out to McRae. And one shot and out for Clemson, too, again on that play. Garrison for three. Knocks it down. Travis Garrison. Four of eight from three-point land this season. He, he had a couple of rush jump shots, I thought, early, but that one came out of the offense. Really, nobody around him. He was able to catch it in rhythm and knock it down. Robinson left alone a much-needed three from Shawan Robinson. He has 12. Only player in double figures, and it looks like if they're going to get a spark offensively, it's going to come from Shawan Robinson. Gary Williams thought Gilchrist got hacked on the arm there. So you want to be a college head coach. Introducing the Kyocera SL300R with exclusive R2 technology. It powers up in less than a second. It shoots the moment you press the shutter button. And it captures picture after beautiful picture at a blazing three and a half frames a second until your memory card is full. As our friends in Japan say, Instant victory, which probably makes a lot more sense in Japan. Kyocera SL300R, the fastest digital camera on the planet. Kyocera. Instant victory! You see an ancient source of power. At Franklin Templeton, we saw a chance to invest in what became the international leader in wind technology, generating powerful returns for Templeton Fund shareholders. Finding opportunities like this around the world requires a unique perspective one that's made Templeton a leader in global investing for over 50 years. Franklin Templeton Investments, gain from our perspective. Okay, okay, Mike, I know you think your truck is totally sick, but this is what I think of your precious 4x4 hang out all day with your stupid friend's truck! Push it! Tonight on your Southern Sports Report, we'll take you behind the scenes as both teams settle into Super Bowl City. Our Sandra Golden sets the stage, plus Terry Chick sits down with Panthers D lineman Mike Rucker. Your Southern Sports Report tonight at 10. It's an ACC battle. Oliver Purnell's Hungry Tigers will be on the prowl at the Thriller Dome when they take on Paul Hewitt's talented jackets. Clemson versus Georgia Tech, Tuesday at 7 on Fox Sports Net. Saturday, Pac-10 basketball presented by Kyocera returns. 14th ranked Arizona takes on Washington State. Coverage begins for Eastern, one Pacific, only on Fox. Well, we talked about uh, how Maryland has gotten back in this game, and it's on the glass, and you see the rebounds there, and 
backcourt, I talked about John Gilchrist, one of the better rebounding point guards, and he's contributed 12 in this game. That's what's helped uh, get them back in. Fifty-three, forty-six. Still plenty of basketball left for the Tigers. Seven oh seven to play. Garrison, fifteen footer not there. Tip try by Smith won't fall. And now comes in with the basketball, trailing by seven. Over the back will be called against Garrison. Rice trying to get, trying to make that minute go by more quickly and get involved here. Tom, for both guys, the guys that we highlighted at the top, uh, Sherrod Ford, Jamar Smith, having struggles this evening, although Smith does have eight rebounds on the game. Akinbala 0 for 1 from the line so far tonight. Make it 0 for 2 and now just 14 of 31 on the year. What's amazing is a testament to their defense that Clemson has gone only one field goal in the last eight minutes and are still in this game. Six minutes left, and the Tigers at home trailing by seven. Robinson passing up the three. Tough leaner in the lane won't go down. And then a reach in foul will go against Babalola. Hope they got Robinson. I beg your pardon. If you remember at the end of the first half, Clemson was getting out in transition and getting some easy baskets. Those have really gone away. Maryland has stiffened, kept them in the half court, and it's just everything that Clemson's doing in the half court has been a struggle. Three fouls now on Shawan Robinson. The eighth team foul against the Tigers. So one and one for Garrison. First trip to the line here tonight. A 70% free throw shooter. Garrison actually was the starter of the first 11 games of the uh, of the year this year. Then uh, they decided to make a change and bring uh, Beckway in. And, Maybe not the offensive presence that uh, Garrison is, but a shot blocker and a rebounder. A little more active as an athlete. He's had a good game tonight. Nine points to go along with five rebounds, as you mentioned, off the bench. Yep. Critical time now for Clemson. Maryland is open a nine-point lead. Hamilton, and the follow won't go for Akinbala. The, you know, Akinbala would have been better served to get the rebound, come down, and then go back up. He tried a tip, but really didn't have control of it. Garrison had it rejected by Akinbala, but he's called for getting a piece of the arm. And again, Garrison, who just hit two free throws a moment ago, will go back to the strike. They did a nice job on that play, Tom. There was a, a cut off the flex, and they threw it back to the weak side as Garrison was ducking into the lane. It really caught Akinbala a little bit by surprise. He came into the end of Maryland some big time credentials out of DeMatha. You know, certainly the, the pedigree there as a player. And he just has, has struggled to become an elite player for this team, but certainly if continues to produce like this, can be a very solid bench player right. for Gary Williams. And one of those guys that who knows, I mean, by the, by this time next year, he could become one of those elite players. Yep. You know, some guys are able to do it right out of the gate, Mike, like, like you were able to coming out of high school in Connecticut. Some guys, it just takes a little while. And normally, I think it takes big players longer. You know, I, I think I think guards and, and small forwards have an easier chance to, to break in. And, uh, you know, whether you're a late bloomer physically, whatever reason it is, um, it takes bigs a little longer. Boy, is that self-serving or what? There's no debate about that. <laughs> Always defending the big guys, beating up on the little guys, and a foul called underneath. Well, speaking of big guys, the biggest. 
just entered the game. Hassan <laughs> Fafana. <laughs> Jamar Smith will leave. We mentioned earlier Smith and uh, Ford. Not a lot of scoring from either one, but as Mike pointed out a moment ago, Jamar Smith does have nine rebounds in the game. Boy, Clemson having just one field goal in the last nine minutes, but missing chances to get back in it at the free throw line. Right. Missing their last four. You know, Hobbs under a 60% free throw shooter, so. Gilchrist left alone. Maryland's largest lead. At 13, and Oliver Purnell wants a timeout with 4.54 to go. But backside just fell asleep defensively for Clemson. Pretty good find by the big fella there from Gilchrist cutting inside, returning the favor to his point guard. That's how we talked about concentration and the war of attrition. I mean, you're just battling against pressure all game long, and at some point, it, it can catch up to you, and I think it's caught up to Clemson right now. You know, it's been very interesting. Uh, when you have a young team, and Mike, you've talked about this a lot, you know, in, in this case, Maryland. When you have a young club that you're trying to develop an identity and a toughness to continue the winning tradition that the program has set for itself, especially here over the last 10 years, each and every game can bring something different, not only in how you play, but in who plays. And here, Kaner Medley coming off a monster game against Duke, especially in the second half. Maryland has made this big run with him on the bench and Garrison, who recently was benched, in the game. Well, and who you're playing, you're playing a team that rebounds very well. So you got Hassan Fafana in the ball game but to help shore that up. You got a big lineup out on the floor. You, you, you're for Gary Williams, you're trying to address a need which has been rebounding over the last three or four games. So you go with those players that you feel are going to help you in that instance. Well, Gary Williams, six consecutive years, has finished in the top three in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Look at this. Winning seasons of the ACC, 10 in a row for Gary. Coach K with 11 straight back from 84 to 94. Look at Dean Smith. It almost looks like a typo. And it was your math that brought up that the next three <laughs> added together don't add up to what Coach Smith put on the board. I needed every finger and toe that I had. I saw your laptop pulled out for a minute. I was wondering what you were doing. <laughs> three points right, no good. Out for the rebound. Had it rejected by Fofana. And then Fofana and Hobbs, along with Gilchrist, all on the floor. Possession arrow will favor Clemson. Well, you know what? You know, you know, coaching a young team, challenge for Gary Williams as well. I mean, here's a guy who used to coaching seniors. Now he's got to kind of shift gears. But I like the fact that he gives this kid fun a chance because of what he's done in practice. You know, that's, that's, yep. a, that's a heck of a system to play in when you can earn playing time on the practice floor. 4.29 left to play here at Little John Coliseum. 59-46. Maryland in front. Hobbs continues to ask for the basketball. And now Ford won again. Ford's got it. Little jump hook. Still not there. Been that kind of night for Sherrod Ford. That decent looks at the basket, too. He's so long that he can play over the top of you. wins this season against ranked opponents such as Wisconsin, Florida, and North Carolina. That one laid in by Gilchrist in the lead again. Extended now to 15. Their losses, three of those have come inside the conference. As Robinson misses a three. Two came in consecutive days outside the conference against Gonzaga and West Virginia. You know, it's amazing though to hear Gary Williams, and we'll talk about it after, but the uh, the chatter around Washington, you know, this club, the expectations are so high that uh, five losses seems like the end of the world to this uh, to that group. Of course, a made basket can look like the end of the world sometimes <laughs> watching Gary Williams. What do I expect from my new full-size truck? I expect it to be powerful. I expect it to have room for my crew or my family. And it's a Toyota, so I know it'll show up for work every day, like me.
Introducing the all-new 2004 Tundra Double Cab, Toyota's biggest truck ever. And now get $12.50 cash back on all 2004 Tundra regular and access cab models. See your local dealer or visit buyatoyota.com today. Totally Football is your inside source for gridiron news. Jay, you were actually the one who called Keyshawn to tell him he was being deactivated. Insider Jay Glazer breaks the story before anyone else. I spoke to some team officials today, and they do think that there's a good chance he can get a year's suspension. Inside the huddle, behind the scenes, and breaking news. Test positive for THG. You're going to have a four-game ban. Totally Football, weeknights on Fox Sports Net. Wednesday on Countdown to Signing Day, it's Commitment Wednesday as four of the nation's elite All-South recruits will be announcing their college decisions live in studio. First up, it's DL Aaron Jones, followed by athlete extraordinaire Kenny Ingram. Next, will it be the Tide or the Dogs for DL Lorenzo Washington? Then, O.L. Leon Hart announces his big decision. Plus, special guest Xavier Carter. Wednesday at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net. Introducing Late Night Poker. The series that all of Europe is talking about finally comes to the US. It's television's only nightly poker series and it's only on Fox Sports Net. Marquia Sarah's shot of the game comes from John Gilchrist. Shot clock winding down. Three, two, has to let it fly and banks it in. Well, you know, <laughs> he got it up there nice and soft, but what a bailout shot. Really energized the bench for that team as well. well. We talked about at the very beginning how important this game was for both teams, but if Maryland had any hopes of trying to get back into the ACC regular season late, a win crucial for the Terrapin. That's the beginning conference play at one and three. Looks like they're on that run and powered by, and we talked about war of attrition. It, it, it finally arose here in the late in the second half, a 23 to three run in the last eight and a half minutes. Gilchrist right by Hamilton to the lane and then miss the layup. Well, you know, it, it certainly has not been anywhere close to the kind of performance we've seen from Gilchrist in the past yet. You look up on the board, he has 13 points to go along with five rebounds and five assists. Offensive foul against Babalola. Well, really, I think it's, and it's done a good job. And we talked about the, the, the bickering on the team in that first half. Everybody very much on the second page in the on the same page in the second half. So again, just another opportunity for for Gilchrist to get control of this team. Obviously, he was an understudy last year under Stephen Blake. This year, lead man. Blake has been playing very, very well here recently. By the way, for the Washington Wizards. And Strawberry trying to throw it down and goes down hard. I tell you, that's a scary feeling when you have your legs taken out from underneath you and you know that that floor is coming up quickly. Okay, you are sure? Okay, yes. There's the look by Ford. Nothing dirty about that. No, made, made a play on the ball. Strive to the block. Strawberry brought it in hard. Something's got to give. Well, we certainly hope that he's all right. Maybe he just came down on his hip. Two shots. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, when you fall and you land on your side, Tom, there's no padding there. I mean, your hip, your knee. Yep. He keeps rubbing that left hip, although he keeps flexing the left knee. So now Kaner Medley brought off the bench. We have not seen him in over 14 minutes, yet still 12 points in the game. Yep. And uh, you know, the, the thing that has hurt is that balanced scoring four players in double figures for Maryland. Everybody right around 13, 11 points. Still only one double figure score for Clemson. That's Shawan Robinson with 12.
And that'll be goaltending. Only the second field goal in the last 12 minutes. Really a silly decision by Kaner Medley on that play. That shot had no chance of going in, and he gives up two free points. Sixty-three, forty-eight, fifteen-point lead for Maryland, and Gilchrist Crowley took a little extra hop as he was attacking the basket. Good call. There's still two and a half to play here at Little John Coliseum. Got a very small crowd here tonight because of a winter storm. Came rolling through here very early today, bringing freezing rain and snow, and a reach-in foul will be called against McRae. Hopefully it's not as bad as last year. Remember the ice storm that came through the south and uh, debilitated a lot of the area for about a week. I was without power for, for seven days. Yep. In the Charlotte area. Take, they'll take all the snow you want, but the freezing rain, that's, <laughs> it's, it's tough to overcome. Oh, and then we rem uh, remember uh, our trip to Maryland last year when that devastating storm hit the eastern seaboard, and well, we were stranded in Maryland for five days. <laughs> well, we, were, we were eating grilled cheese sandwiches at the end. That's all they had. At the hotel, they were out of everything else. <laughs> well, at least we had something. <laughs> Underneath the Kaner Medley and forced up the shot. Garrison comes in, but may have come over the back. Yep, he did. And Gary Williams wants a timeout. Two minutes to go. 63-49, Maryland. to know reach out with them mode on the wireless service america trusts at&t wireless park sports is giving aspiring filmmakers a chance of a lifetime with the best student film festival presented by sony electronics you can win an internship with fox sports plus the cool sony camera you can see right here log on to foxsports.com there you see the Clemson, Maryland, Maryland last year giving them all sorts of problems. And, you know, realistically, Tom, this is the same Clemson team without Ed Scott, right? Without a first team all ACC player. So it, it hasn't gotten easier. And, uh, you know, Oliver Purnell opted not to bring anybody new in this year. So this is basically Larry Shive's team that he's coaching without its best player. And they're very excited about the uh, first recruiting class for Oliver Purnell coming in next year. They've already signed three of the top 100 rated high school players in the country. They have two top 30 players already committed that are juniors this year for the following year. Now James May, Cheyenne Moore, Sam Perry, part of a class that's uh, coming in a top 25 class that's been rated for next year. And hey, Oliver Purnell has said, you come in the door with the ACC on your card and kids uh, gets their attention. You know, I love his analogy about Clemson being a, a town a little remote uh, compared to some of the others in the conference, especially in, say, like Maryland, and right in the heart of Baltimore and D.C. He said, hey, look, we're no different than Indiana, as an example, or Iowa, or Purdue. He said, you can get players to come here because of the conference we play in and because of the facilities that we have here. Like I say, you know, their, their practice facility, their annex is gorgeous, oh, and yeah. that's brand new. And uh, what they've done to Little John, serious upgrade in the facilities. One oh seven left to play in a thirteen point Maryland lead. Well, we talked uh, today that we felt if if Maryland was get, was able to get north of sixty points, that it was going to be tough for for Clemson to, to win this ball game. And it's just it's it's the state of their offense. And I think especially in the ACC, they've got to have an extraordinary shooting game. Uh, 
to, to help complement their defense. And they had that. They had a win against Boston College earlier this year. They shot over 50% from the field and from the floor, 80% from the line. That's what it's going to take. 19 points in the second half after a very impressive opening minute, by and large, opening half by Clemson. And, you know, and Maryland, to their credit, they shored up the defensive glass. No more second chance opportunities. And certainly no run out opportunities. Well, a few Terrapin fans able to get through the icy conditions outside and walk in behind the Maryland bench. A reminder, standing by Mike and Larry, our Kyocera post-game show here on ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples. Gilcrest, the leader in the lane. Gilchrist with 15 points, 13 of them have come here in the second half. He did not have a field goal in the first 20 minutes. And Shawan Robinson, meanwhile, getting his first start of the year. Much needed win for Maryland after a home loss to Duke and a tough game coming up against Wake Forest. Maryland wins it. 12 in a row now. Maryland is, Maryland is beaten. The Clemson Tigers. Clemson has not beaten the Terrapin since 97-98. So the Terps will go to two and three in conference play. And they'll go to 11 and five overall. Clemson slips to eight and nine. So that's going to do it from Clemson, South Carolina, for our entire crew. We thank you for being with us. We'll see you next Sunday in College Park. Let's go back to Atlanta with Mike and Larry. Be careful going home, guys. Great job done tonight in Clemson. Welcome to the Kiyosara Post Postgame Show. Alongside my partner, the 60-year-old veteran college basketball analyst, Larry Conley. I'm Mike Goldberg. Our final score, Maryland wins 65-52. to Maryland big in the second half. What was the difference? Well, there are a couple of things. One is that they got more assertive on offense, and they decided to get the ball down the floor. They got a lot of transition baskets, and I thought that really helped them. Clemson really put up a valiant effort. Uh, they never gave up, but it was also a basketball team that's severely outmanned tonight. Uh, outmanned most of the ACC season. As Mike Jaminski pointed out, though, Oliver Purnell, times will get better. Maryland again next week here on ACC Sunday Night Hoops, a Super Bowl Sunday edition. The Terrapins host high-flying Julius Hodge and NC State. Our special Super Bowl Sunday starting time is 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific. Get you caught up on the highlights on this Sunday. Number five, Louisville at Tennessee. Luke Whitehead with the inside layup, and Louisville was up early, but Tennessee looking very good in this game. They did, and they played an excellent first half. This was a Tennessee team that was getting a number of runouts. C.J. Watson right here getting the layup. And then on the break, John Winchester with the jam. Tennessee led by three. Now, Tennessee had Rick Pitino's team very, very frustrated, really. They were using their own pressure against them. But still, as you know, number five Louisville will not go away. Well, Tennessee very tough at Rocky Top. And Rick Pitino, having coached at Kentucky, has been there a number of times. So he knows what it's like. But Louisville came back. Otis George with the big slam. And then very next play off another steal, Francisco Garcia will lay it in. Maybe one of the best all-around players in all of college basketball, Francisco Garcia. Cardinals. They are happy. Seven minutes remain, 53-48, number five Louisville being pushed to the limit. We will keep you updated. Louisville has lost just one time this season. Number nine, Kentucky at Notre Dame. When you talk Notre Dame, you talk about that man. Chris Thomas, the three-pointer, Irish within six. Kentucky working it down low to none other than Chuck Hayes. And that uh, tandem of Eric Daniels and Chuck Hayes getting it done for an easy layup. Then second half, Chris Quinn misses the three, but Jordan Cornett is there with the follow. Kentucky, your alma mater, never does it easy, but it's effective nonetheless. They had two tough games this week. One against Tennessee and Knoxville. They climbed out of that one, and it was a grinder today against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. To the Big 12. Number 12, Kansas hosting Colorado. Kansas looked good. Jeff Hawkins with the steal. Sweet pass to Keith Langford, who lays it in. And then on the break, Michael Lee, much to the pleasure of this Kansas crowd. Great pass to Wayne Simeon. Wayne Simeon, 16 points, 8 rebounds in the first half alone. Kansas played great defense all day. Well, they did, and Bill Self has built a club uh, around defense. He did the same thing at Illinois and at Tulsa. 
Kansas with a big win today, 78 to 57. Nice pass from Aaron Miles to Giddens. A big statement game, Larry. After getting upset by Richmond, Simeon, the leading scorer with 20 points on the afternoon. Arizona, number 14 in the nation. They win easily. Their fourth straight game of scoring 90 points. They lead the nation in scoring. Channing Fry with a double-double, 18 points and 11 rebounds. Larry, let's talk number five, Louisville. I know you have talked to Rick Pitino at length this week. They won at Kentucky earlier this year. They crushed Cincinnati, but yet they're on the ropes tonight. Why? Well, I think there are, there's always a reason for when you go on the road, particularly when you're out of conference and you step in and play somebody you're not familiar with. And Tennessee is one of those teams. But they've gone into Knoxville and having been down in the first half for most of that 20 minutes, they have fought back to take this lead in the second half. This is just a very veteran basketball team with great balance. They play 10 players and all of them get almost equal amount of playing time. Rick Pitino once again doing a masterful job terrific on the Terrific coach. Yes, he certainly is. All right, terrific coaching, especially in the second half for Gary Williams with his young team. Maryland wins 65-52 on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Larry and I, so much more to talk about on the Kiyosera game show. Meetings at eight. We got five minutes to get done. Go around this guy. He's not even moving. With the class leading 250 horsepower V6 engine, okay. the Saturn View can get you to the meeting on time. Unless you turn on the six speaker stereo. Get a new 2004 Saturn View with 0% APR financing or 2000 towards your down payment. See your retailer for details. See you down there. Excuse me, is there a Bank of America ATM around here? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of them. Just around the corner and field and Griffin. There's another one at the theater. Down there by the post office. Right by the deli. There's one of them. Another one right across the courtyard. I know it. Right across the courtyard. More ATMs where you need them. There's one more, right? From Bank of America. Yeah. Higher standards. What's that? The wireless bill. <coughs> Frustrated with your high wireless bill? Take your number to a better place. Call 1-800-T-MOBILE and get the best value in wireless. And now get T-MOBILE three-day weekends with unlimited calling. T-MOBILE. Get more. The 260 horsepower Infiniti G35. One of car and driver's 10 best for two years running. A dream to drive. The Infiniti G35. Welcome back to the Kiyosera postgame show. Maryland wins on the road 65-52. John Gilchrist leads four Terps in double-digit scoring with 15 points. Also had five rebounds and five assists. Back to Death Valley, Mike Jaminski has the winning head coach. Thanks, guys. Uh, Coach Gary Williams, uh, a tough-fought game down here in Clemson. I know we talked before, and it's tough to say it's a must-win, but certainly gets you back in the race. Yeah, now that it's over, it's, it was a must-win, but uh, it, it puts us in you know, a decent position now to compete the rest of the way. And I told the players before the game, they don't hand down any trophies for four games, and that's what we had played. And everybody up in D.C. was acting like uh, something was wrong. And, you know, a lot of teams had some losses, all but one. And, you know, we just had to hang in there, keep our confidence, and, you know, try to play hard. And it took us to the second half before we got it up. But Clemson plays hard. I, I knew that coming in. They, they've played hard every game this year, and they'll continue to do that. Talk about the adjustments that you made at halftime. Clemson, uh, an advantage on the boards in the first half, but that really went away in the second. Well, we just tried to speed up the game. In other words, we pressed every chance we could all over the place, 94 feet, and we didn't do that the first half. That's my fault. We should have done it right at the start of the game, but uh, it was one of those things. We didn't come in here with a lot of confidence. We had lost our last two, even though they were the good teams. We had lost, and, you know, we have a young team, and, you know, it took us to the second half to get our confidence back. Okay, I've let you enjoy this for 30 seconds. Tough game at Wake Forest this week. <laughs> yeah, Wake's not too upset, I guess. So, you know, they'll be ready. Skip's done a great job with that program. They have great players, and uh, we know it's a battle. But, um, you know, there's no easy way out in this league. I mean, every time you look up, you're playing somebody like a Wake Forest, and they're a very good team, and they've proven it. 
Gary, thank you as always. Congratulations on a good win. Back to you guys in the studio. Larry, I don't, you know, I don't know if you know, G-Man was a center and Gary Williams was a point guard. Anyway, down in Tallahassee, how about Chris Paul? What a fine freshman he is for Wake Forest. But in the second half, the Seminoles would start to turn it on. First, it was their senior point guard, Nate Johnson. Then it was the Tim Pickett show. Well, Tim Pickett did it on Thursday against North Carolina. He did the same thing today. His second half, he had no points in the first half, 18 in the last 20 minutes. And it's one of the reasons Florida State got a win today. And again, they storm the floor. They storm the floor again. They knock off two top 10 teams in four days. Florida State defeats Wake Forest 75 to 70. Number 23, Purdue, was taken to overtime by Michigan State. Spartans actually had a chance in regulation to win this game. Yeah, and either one of these clubs who won this game was going to move into a tie at first place with uh, Wisconsin and Indiana. Purdue got the edge of them in overtime today. 18 points for Kenneth Lowe. All right, we talked about the success for Florida State. How about the lack there? Of for number 10 Wake Forest. The count is now four. Four straight losses for Skip Prosser's team. What needs to change? Well, Mike, it's a very difficult situation for them because they had climbed to number three in the country. And anytime your expectation levels are, uh, are, are very high, particularly with your players, with your fans, now all of a sudden what's happened to them is they've got a crisis of confidence. I mean, they've lost four games in a row. They've got a really tough game against a Maryland team who had lost two in a row before they won today. And as Gary Williams said, Skip is not too upset because speaking of Maryland, they win tonight at Clemson. They play Wake next, and then they are a featured team on our Super Bowl Sunday edition of ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Starting time of 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific. It is Maryland against Julius Hodge and NC State. Larry and I with more in just a moment. Tonight on your Southern Sports Report, we'll take you behind the scenes as both teams settle in the Super Bowl City. Our Sandra Golden sets the stage, plus Terry Chick sits down with Panthers D lineman Mike Rucker. Your Southern Sports Report tonight at 10. Weeknights, it's a who's who on the best damn sports show, period. It's a fact! It's the clubhouse for Hollywood and all the things. Please welcome The Rock, Pamela Anderson, Chris Rock, Jesse Jackson, Cuba Gooding Jr. Where anything can and will happen. This is too good and too much fun. And just move your hips in a circle. That is must see T busy right there. Weeknights on Fox Sports Net. Basketball. Now that's a rough sport. It's so physically demanding with all that jumping. Everyone's just so aggressive. There's just way too much pushing and shoving under the net. I mean, come on, guys. Someone's going to get hurt. NASCAR on the Fox. Richmond at Xavier. Tony Dobbins driving the baseline for the layup, and the Spiders lead Xavier by two. Spiders looking for another upset here. Indeed, but for Xavier, it was Roman Sato here draining the triples to take the lead for Xavier. Second half, 2.07 to go. Game tied at 44. Reggie Brown will hit the three. Richmond, though, enjoyed their final lead at 47-44. They would hold on. What a week for the Richmond Spiders. Indeed, a big win over Kansas this week, and they turn around and beat Xavier and Xavier. That is two good back-to-back -back wins for the Richmond Spiders. As well, a win over Temple. Xavier guard shot terribly. Chalmers and Finn were not good. Villanova at Miami. Randy Foy, no look to Curtis Sumter. 14-9 Villanova Wildcats. And then... Villanova by one, Sumter again. Yeah, he hits not one, but two consecutive three-pointers. He shot two today, he made both of them. A lot of Wildcats today. We've got my partner, the Kentucky Wildcat, and how about Villanova? Three and two now in the conference. Randy Foy had a career game, 21 points, eight rebounds, seven assists. I gotta tell you something about this Villanova team. Keep an eye on them because they've gotten Jason Frazier back. He's been out with a stress fracture in his left heel. He got it on November the 3rd. The 6'9 sophomore is a tremendous player. You might want to keep an eye on this Villanova squad. And a good win in conference today. Big games that we will keep an eye on this week. Texas at Texas Tech tomorrow. 
Southern Cal and UCLA is always a rivalry in any sport. It'll be a good one. And then number one, Duke at number 11, Georgia Tech, one of the trio of fine games on Saturday. Bobby Knight at Texas Tech now doing a great job. Rick Barnes, former Clemson coach at Texas. What do we look for in Texas at Texas Tech? Well, I think the thing I'm most interested in seeing between these two teams is how Texas is going to respond after that loss to Oklahoma State over the weekend. I think everybody pretty much expected Texas to go in and win that game. Eddie Sutton has put together an awfully good club down in Stillwater. And while everybody seemed to be talking all year long about this Kansas team and the Missouri club, well, take a look. It's Oklahoma State, and it's Texas, and it's Texas Tech are the clubs really at the top right now. And in the ACC, number one Duke rolled again this week. Does number one Duke get defeated in ACC play? Well, the thing about Duke is I just don't see anybody really coming after them, at least in conference play right now. I mean, they're so far above everyone else. Yeah, everybody's going to make a run at them. But well, I'm going to tell you, like, Mike shashevsky has got his cub playing on both ends of the court right now. It'll be interesting to see, and then you and I will be back in two weeks. Don't forget, next week we will have Maryland and NC State. Once again, happy birthday, partner. You going to be around for my 61st? I would love to be. And your 62nd <laughs> and on and on. Speaking of 60s, Maryland, 65 points was good enough tonight to win on the road. They defeat Clemson 65-52, to 52, outscoring the Tigers by 17 points in the second half. It's been a very uh, wintry night in Clemson, South Carolina, but still a great day for college basketball. For Larry Conley and all of our fine crew here on ACC Sunday Night Hoops, hope you enjoyed our game. And then don't forget Super Bowl Sunday we will be in action in basketball an ACC Super Bowl Sunday special edition the Maryland Terrapins play host to Julius Hodge and the NC State Wolfpack so please make us part of your Super Bowl Sunday next week we go on the air at 2 Eastern 11 Pacific time NC State and Julius Hodge coming off a nice win over Georgia Tech once again our final Maryland 65 Clemson 52 Maryland needed the win they got it. Gary Williams can smile. He is relieved, as are we. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday night, everybody. Introducing the Kyocera SL300R with exclusive R2 technology. It powers up in less than a second. It shoots the moment you press the shutter button. And it captures picture after beautiful picture at a blazing three and a half frames a second until your memory card is full. As our friends in Japan say, instant victory, which probably makes a lot more sense in Japan. Kyocera SL300R, the fastest digital camera on the planet. Kyocera. Instant victory! You're looking at people getting answers to the most important questions they'll ever ask. Questions about their own health, their children's, their parents. You're also looking at something that never existed before. A way to make truly informed decisions about everything from when to visit a doctor to what questions to ask when you get there. WebMD. 16 million people come to WebMD every month. They come to learn about a condition or a diagnosis, to check prescriptions for interactions, to chat with experts or each other. We help them navigate our thousands of medically reviewed pages to find exactly what they need. Information that used to be scattered in a hundred different locations, now all in one place. The place America comes for healthcare answers. A place called WebMD. the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. and welcome back to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. I'm your host, Joanne Jones. It's the day after the Sunshine Millions, and what a day it was. But we have a full card of racing today on Sunday. Let's get into it. The track is fast. The turf is firm. We're getting a pretty shot of the local 
Hollywood Beach, Hallandale community there. And this Sunday card, the day after the Sunshine Millions, looks to be a pretty good one. The opener, Maiden Claimers, 32,000 tag. They're three-year-olds going six and a half furlongs. They're off. Fast start for you, don't get it, and storming on by, Punchline is close up. Buckin' Bronx on the move through from the inside, along with Halo Goodbye and Andover Boy. Next, it's Accelerate and Tom Who with Intense Moment, and the trailer is McGill's Boy, and the leader is You Don't Get It. You don't get it. Three quarters of a length from Punchline, who's up into second. Buck and Bronk, Halo Goodbye, and Andover Boy. Track the front runners all less than two and a half off the lead. Then comes Storming On By, joined by Intense Moment. Here's Intense Moment, five from the front. Accelerate and Tom Who have seven lengths to make up. McGill's Boy is the trailer, and they round the far turn. Punchline is alongside You Don't Get It. It's still You Don't Get It by a neck. Punchline is traveling well outside of him. These two, now two lengths in front of Buck and Bronk and Andover boy. Halo Goodbye is dropping out of it. He's just been passed by Intense Moment. Wide open as they turn for home. Punch line and you don't get it. Punch line's half ahead in front. And over boy's got a chance. So does Intense Moment. And here comes Intense Moment. Three wide in the center of the course. Punch line to the final furlong. Intense Moment and and over boy trying to gun him down on the money and it's going to be close. Punch line narrowly in front. And over boy between horses. Intense Moment to the outside. These three and over boy. Intense Moment. Punch line back to third. And over boy. Intense Intense moment, intense moment. Intense moment, beat and over boy, punchline. Finished third and Halo Goodbye was fourth. Number five, intense moment, and it was just that. He got up in the final strides to win for trainer Alan Iwinski and Jackie John Velasquez paying $6. And we move to the second race, four-year-olds and up. 10,000 claiming tag, they're going six for long scratch. The two also's 13 and 14, and that's it for the changes. They're up. Termination Dust and Blue Jean Racer with Cabot Trail. These three are quickest. Prospect Kid between horses. Dixie's Band is close up, as is Alex's Love. La Canoa, Rancha, Garrett, and Eagle Eye Rear are next. Then David's Halo, followed by Bushwick, and the trailer is Frankie B. Alex's Love and Prospect Kid. These two fastest. Dixie's Band is right there between horses. These three speed away. Blue Jean Racer is fourth now, but three and a half lengths off the lead. Then Termination Dust and a five wide Garrett just inside of him goes Cabot Trail. Eagle Irie is tightly at the rail and five from the front. Then three and a half back to La Canoa Rancha. He's got nine to come. David's Halo is 12 off the lead. Bushwick has 15 to come and Frankie B is desperately out of it and they race to the top of the stretch and Prospect Kid has a short lead. Dixie's band right alongside these two match strides. Termination Dust and Cabot Trail in with chances. Cabot Trail is less than a length and a half from the front. It is Prospect Kid just in front. Dixie's band. Cabot Trail three wide. Termination Dust between horses. Any one of those four can win it. Dixie's Band and Prospect Kid with Cabot Trail now back in third. It is Dixie's Band through from the inside. Prospect Kid, Prospect Kid, Dixie's Band, Prospect Kid. Dixie's Band just missed half ahead. Cabot Trail was third and Termination Dust finished fourth. A very tight photo, but number four, Prospect Kid gets up to win it for Alan Iwinski once again winning both halves of the double. This time adding Blinkers and Edgar Prado. They were 7-1 to one early, got bet down late to the lukewarm 7-2 to two favorite. See how they train, then see how they run. The rulers Court and Alex Elise walking home in the Norfolk. They absolutely dominated. The OBS selected two-year-olds in training sale. Called the race course Tuesday, February 3rd. Andy Capper's Daily, the original online form, gives you the best past performances anywhere. Now you can print your personal racing form right on your computer. If you think you've seen downloaded past performances before, think again. You may never use the daily racing form again. Advanced speed ratings, pace ratings, and morning lines. Print the form the way you handicap. It's your form, your way. Visit Andy Capper's Daily website at www.itsdata.com or call 800-646-0518. That's 1-800-646-0518 for the original online form. Fasig Tipton Focus. In 2003, Fasig Tipton Calder produced many grade one stakes winners. Two year old Lion Hearts. Three year old grade one winner, Den Most Wanted. Four year old graded stakes winner, Porto Winners. Five year old grade one winner, Harmony Lodge. Where will you be this winter? Where will you? Where will you be? And where will you be this winter? 
Basic Tipton Calder selected two-year-olds in training. Don't miss your chance to focus on a winner. Where do grade one stakes winners come from? Silver Wagon has taken the lead. He's taken the lead and he's pulling away from Chapel Royal and all the rest. They come from the OBS selected two-year-old sale. Call the race course Tuesday, February 3rd. The third race is for three-year-old fillies. They're in for a $40,000 claiming tag and going six furlongs. No changes. They're off. Formal Fanny broke running and goes for the front. Sunny Gal away in the second. Heavenly Scandal and Jetster third and fourth. Mysteries, Jewels, and Worldliness are next. Then Scarlet Memories and Harbor Bell, and the trailer is Desdemona's Dream. It is Formal Fanny fastest up the back stretch. She's three quarters of a length in front of Sunny Gal. Jetster's on the move through from the inside, and here comes Jetster all the way up to be a joint second. Mysteries, Jewels, and to the outside, Scarlet Memories are next. Then comes two lengths further back to Harbor Bell. Worldliness got to be about nine or ten from the front, and the trailer is Desdemona's dream as they round the far turn, and Formal Fanny is getting away. Formal Fanny to the quarter pole. Now a solid three lengths in front of Sunny Gal in second. Heavenly Scandal is third, about to be joined and passed by Scarlet Memories in the yellow, but meanwhile Formal Fanny is solidly in front as she turns for home. A good six lengths to the good. Sunny Gal and Scarlet Memories battle now second and third. Worldliness is in gear, but Formal Formal Fanny has built up a big lead to the 16th pole, drifting out, but she's got a lot of lengths to work with as Formal Fanny is seven in front. Sunny Gal Worldliness and Scarlet Memories battle for second. Formal Fanny in front. Formal Fanny won by about five and a half or six. I think Worldliness was second. It's very close for third between Sunny Gal and Scarlet Memories. But it doesn't really matter for the trifecta. A big win by number four, Formal Fanny, owned and trained by Adolfo Alfonso, ridden by Renzo Diaz, the apprentice. And this is a horse who seemed to really improve last time, winning by 11 at Calder, and, well, repeated that effort today at a big price, 1940. We move to the fourth, a maiden claiming event, 45,000 tag, six furlongs the distance, and there are three-year-olds competing. They're off. Honorable Buck and very formal MD show speed. Matsu Toga and Headbanger are close up. Carson Unleashed sent through at the rail. Then comes Mr. Jerome and War Uprising, followed by Wicklow Bound and Always Welcome. Then Bristol Bomber and the trailer is Do the Boogie. Very formal MD and Matsu Toga are fastest up the back stretch. Very formal MD is a neck in front. Matsu Toga is second by two and a half lengths. Carson Unleashed nicely through into third. He's just inside of Mr. Jerome. Three deep goes Honorable Buck. Then it's four lengths further back to War Uprising. He's got seven to come. About to be joined and passed by Always Welcome. Bristol Bomber has 12 to make up. Then Wicklow Bound. And the trailer is Do the Boogie. And the leader is Very Formal MD narrowly in front. Matsu Toga alongside in second. Here's Headbanger up into third. Any one of those three could do it. They are now two and a half in front of Carson Unleashed, who still has a chance in fourth to the final furlong. Very formal MD and Headbanger one, two. Matsu Toga is back to third. About to be joined and passed by Mr. Jerome. Carson Unleashed at the rail. Very formal MD is clear now, and he's got it. Headbanger is second. Mr. Jerome third. Very formal MD. Very formal MD, won by about four and a half. Headbanger was second, Mr. Jerome third. Close for fourth between Matsutoga and Carson Unleashed. Very formal MD, looked to be the speed of the speed on paper and actually took them gate to wire here, adding Lasix for Henry Colazzo and Horatio Caramanos, the very good rider from Maryland who's in riding here, getting, I think, his first winner here at Gulfstream Park. I'm sure we'll see many more. The fifth race, an allowance event for three-year-olds, seven furlongs the distance. They're off. Frisky Spider broke running and goes for the front. Ouija Leah away in second. Mr. Piano Man breaks third. Orphan Brigade and Cheetah Speed are fourth and fifth, and the early trailer is Hope for the Roses. It's Frisky Spider, very sharp out of the... 
shoot, and he leads Wee Jalea, who comes to take him on. And here comes Wee Jalea, going to make Frisky Spider quicken up the backstretch. And so now these two go very fast. Wee Jalea is ahead in front at the rail. Frisky Spider is second now by three and a half lengths with Cheetah Speed and Mr. Piano Man, now third and fourth. Orphan Brigade is fifth, and he's about seven from the front, and he's a length and a half in front of Hope for the Roses as Wee Jalea takes it to the favorite, leaving the backstretch. Wee Jalea is a neck in front. Frisky Spider is right alongside in second, still traveling comfortably. These two have matched raced away now by six lengths from Cheetah Speed and Mr. Piano Man. Orphan Brigade is fifth now. Could soon get into third. Hope for the Roses follows him and the match race continues at the top of the stretch. Wee Jalea and Frisky Spider. These two match strides. Frisky Spider outside of Wee Jalea. Orphan Brigade is up into third and he's four from the front and they come to the final furlong. Frisky Spider and a tenacious Wee Jalea gonna test him right down to the wire. Frisky Spider's half ahead in front Wee Jalea is counterpunching and coming right back at him. Frisky Spider all out. Wee Jalea, Frisky Spider did it. Boy, did he have to work to do it. Frisky Spider ridden out past the wire, well past the wire. Wee Jalea was second. Orphan Brigade finished third and hope for the roses. Fourth. Number six, Frisky Spider, probably hoping for the roses here. Now three for three. Add permission to gallop out strongly another eighth of a mile after the wire and did just that and got the job done here at a low price, 320. We move to the sixth, which will kick off today's pick six with no carryover. A very tough maiden event for three-year-old fillies going six furlongs. They're off. Slow start for Irish Melody. Good start for Denim, Wildcat, and Storm Minstrel. They break one, two. Rudy's Leslie and Sweet Caper at the rails. Speakeasy and Wellspring are close up. Then Silky Tresses and Swiss Valley. Irish Melody now has two beat. They are Nevada Sunrise and Comanche Star. Denim, Wildcat, fastest up the backstretch. She's a half length in front of Rudy's Leslie and Storm Minstrel, together second and third. Speakeasy and Sweet Caper are fourth and fifth and four and a half off the lead, just outside of her. Those two are his first-time starter, Well Spring. Irish Melody is up to mid-pack now, but still nine from the front. Nevada Sunrise has 12 to come. Silky Tresses is next, and the entry mates are at the back of the pack. Comanche Star and Swiss Valley, and they head for home. Denim Wildcat and Storm Minstrel are one, two. Denim Wildcat a half ahead in front. Storm Minstrel is second. The whip is out on Rudy's Leslie to the inside and Speakeasy. Then Irish Melody and Well Spring. They come to the final furlong. Storm Minstrel has put away Denim Wildcat. She'll have to hold off Irish Melody, who's running a huge race after a slow start. Wellspring and Speakeasy are next. It is Storm Minstrel and Irish Melody, and here comes Irish Melody to get the money. Irish Melody won by a length and a half. Close for second between Storm Minstrel and a flying Comanche star. Speakeasy finished fourth. Just an enormously impressive win by number six, Irish Melody, who missed the break, got left by three or four lengths and came flying up. That's enough to deter almost any horse, especially a first-time starter. Good job, Todd Pletcher, John Velasquez. Every time you smoke a cigarette, you're taking seven to 11 minutes off your life. For the typical smoker, that can be as much as 10 years. You're nearly twice as likely to die of heart disease and almost three times more likely to die of cancer. By the age of 45, your lung function has already declined at three times the normal rate. If you're ready to quit smoking, we can help. We're the makers of Smoke Away, a doctor-recommended program developed to eliminate your cravings and have you smoke-free in just seven days. It's all natural and nicotine-free. And best of all, it's guaranteed to work for your money back. Call us today. Thousands have already quit using Smoke Away. Shouldn't you? I, I know it worked the first day for me. I quit overnight. The first time I used it, I felt the craving just go away. Call 1-800-452-7440. It just sort of happens. You wake up one morning and your needs have grown. The internet's a lot like that. People everywhere are waking up to find they've outgrown their dial-up service. But now, that's no big deal. Introducing an easy step into the world of broadband. 
New Bell South Fast Access DSL Lite. Starting at our everyday price of just $29.95 a month, get more speed so you can get more done. Finally, life on the internet is a whole lot faster than dial-up without tying up your phone line. And power up to full Fast Access DSL at any time. Sign up now and get a free DSL modem, free activation, and two free months. Plus, order online and get $50 cash back. New Fast Access DSL Lite. Call today for the world of broadband at our new lower price of just $29.95 a month. And if your needs grow again, we'll get you right up to speed. Bell South. Listening. Answering. The seventh race is an allowance event for three-year-old fillies. They'll be sprinting and going six furlongs. They're off. Shimmy Shake, Cosmic Wish, Spanish Slew, Valid Move, and Ballroom Deputy all break well. Spanish Slew is a neck in front. Golf of Gdansk and Cute Connie are next, and the trailer is F Freedom's Forum. Spanish Slew and Cosmic Wish, these two fastest. Spanish Slew is a neck in front. Cosmic Wish is second by a length and three quarters from Shimmy Shake at the rail and Valid Move just outside. Ballroom Deputy is hard ridden in fifth by Brees Blanc. She's six lengths off the lead and a length in front of Star of Gdansk. The two trailers are Freedom's Forum and Cute Connie as they round the far turn. Spanish Slew and Cosmic Wish, one two since they sprung the gate. Spanish Slew's a neck in front. Cosmic Wish is second. Valid Move's moving nicely. And here comes Valid Move in the orange and white. She's going to engage for the front. Shimmy Shake has just been passed by Scar Star of Gdansk. Ballroom Deputy is sixth with six to come and it's wide open to the final. Final furlong, Spanish slew to the outside, Star of Gdansk. Valid move between horses, shimmy shake at the rail, and Star of Gdansk has taken charge. Star of Gdansk now races away by three. Shimmy shake might get second, but she won't catch Star of Gdansk. Star of Gdansk won by about five. Shimmy shake did get second. Spanish slew third. Close for fourth between Freedom's Forum and Valid Move. A strong showing by number one, Golf of Gdansk. Trainer James Ryerson and Jackie Mark Gidry team up here, and the one two finishers exit the same last race. The eighth race is for Maidens. They're three year old fillies going six furlongs, and it begins the pick four. A lot of very interesting first time starters to watch. They're up. Welcome home and our right of spring show speed. Cherry Barm and Inca Storm are close up. Get Set and Sethina right there. Time for a grand slam and eat, drink, and be merry with La Vedette between horses, Artak Dancer, and another Moochie, and the trailer is every trick. It's Cherry Bomb, fastest up the back stretch. Time for a grand slam moves through inside of her, and Welcome Home is three deep. These three match strides. Artax Dancer is all the way up to fourth and on the move. Eat, Drink, and Be Merry is fifth. Get Set, La Vedette, to the outside, our right of spring, and at the rail, another Moochie. Then comes two back to Inca Storm. Every trick is now mid-pack, and the trailer is Sethina as they round the far turn. Cherry Bomb is just in front. Cherry Bomb is at the rail, and just outside of her, it's Welcome Home, and these two continue to match strides. Welcome Home's ahead in front. Cherry Bomb is second, two and a half lengths now. Time for a Grand Slam is third. Then comes La Vedette, and they come to the final furlong with Cherry Bomb getting away. La Vedette is up into third, but Cherry Bomb comes to the final 16th, and now three and a half lengths in front. Welcome Home is second, then La Vedette and another Moochie. It's Cherry Bomb in front. Cherry Bomb won by about four and a half. Welcome home with second, La Vedette third, another Moochie, finish fourth. Yet another winner with a first-time starter for trainer Todd Fletcher as he has the number five Cherry Bomb, ready like a bomb for his second win on the card. Gives jockey John Velasquez his third win on today's card. Nice run by the number 12, Welcome Home, who popped out of the gate and almost took them gate to wire. We move to the ninth, an allowance event for three-year-old fillies going six furlongs yet again. Name for the late, great breeder and owner, John Franks. They're at the post. They're off. Fortress Hill missed the break by about a length. Foxy Birdie and Baba Gonzo break one, two. Can't buy class away in third. 
Dance Fee and a Recovering Fortress Hill, then Mango Lassie, and the trailer is Sweet Vision. Baba Gonzo about to clear off up the back stretch. It's Baba Gonzo now a length and a half in front of both Foxy Birdie and Can't Buy Class, who moves through at the rail. Sweet Vision's on the move, and here comes Sweet Vision three deep. She's a joint second now and up after the front. Then it's two and a half back to Fortress Hill. Outside of Fortress Hill goes Mango Lassie, and they round the far turn. Baba Gonzo is in charge. It is Baba Gonzo free running to the quarter pole. She's two and a half lengths in front of Sweet Vision in second. Can't Buy Class is dropped back now. She's third and five from the front, and Baba Gonzo and Sweet Vision are one, two, and doing it well. Baba Gonzo in front. Sweet Vision races in second. Dance Fee is third. Just inside of her goes Fortress Hill, and here comes Sweet Vision to strike to the front. Sweet Vision takes over the lead. Baba Gonzo now back to second. Fortress Hill still four from the front in Dance Fee, but it's Sweet Vision with 100 yards to run, and she's home. Baba Gonzo is second. Fortress Hill is third. Sweet Vision in front. Sweet Vision won by three. Baba Gonzo was second. Fortress Hill third. And Dance Fee finished Number fourth. five, Sweet Vision trotting back to the winner's circle. Trained by John Terranova. Ridden by George Chavez, a very consistent horse. And if you backed him, you get a nice 660. For the past half century, the Florida Horsemen's Benevolent and Protective Association has worked behind the scenes to meet the ongoing daily needs of all backstretch employees, thereby helping ensure the highest caliber of racing possible for both fans and horsemen. On behalf of the over 5,000 owners and trainers who make up our membership, the FHBPA, among many other programs, provides on-track health clinics for workers, supports the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation in Ocala, co-sponsors Family Fun Days at Gulfstream Park and supports vital legislative efforts to raise purses and improve the thoroughbred industry in the state of Florida. Your Florida Horsemen's Benevolent and Protective Association. Horsemen helping horsemen and the fan alike. Give us a call anytime and see how you can get involved in our legislative efforts. Contact Executive Director Kent Sterling at 305-625-4591. Tate pulls away from Squirtle Squirt, but Aldebaran coming with a determined run on the outside. It is Orient Tate, green link lead. Aldebaran closing, but not enough to get to Orient Tate, who was dazzling today. Our 10th and featured event, the McDarmada Handicap. 100,000 on the line. It's a grade three for three-year-olds and up going a long distance, a mile and three-eighths on the grass. They're at the post. They're up. Mark one broke well, so did Sforza. To the outside, Office Ghost. These three fast into stride. Mark one and Office Ghost are one, two. Slough Valley joins Sforza. Prodigious checked in, checked hard, leaving the backstretch. It cost him about two lengths and two positions. Gander moves up. Then comes Sir Brian's sword and Bicentennial. Prodigious now has four beat. They are request for parole in Spanish Spur. At the back of the pack are Macaw and In Hand as they turn into the stretch for the first time. Slough Valley has made it all the way up to take over the lead. Trying to slow it down now. Slough Valley is three quarters of a length in front of Office Ghost in second. The veteran Gander is traveling nicely. He's three deep in third. Mark one just inside of those two. Sforz is tucked in at the rail. He's fifth with two and a half lengths to make up. Bicentennial and request for parole. Both have five to come. Then Sir Brian Sword at the rail. Pro Prodigious is about nine from the front. He's joined by Spanish Spur. Still at the back of the pack are In Hand and Macaw. Ten lengths from first to last as they round the clubhouse turn and head to the back stretch in the 10th McDarmada handicap. Slough Valley and Office Ghost are still 1-2 and Slough Valley's a neck in front. Office Ghost is second. Gander is right there watching the front runners. He is third and less than a length from the front. The gray mark one is at the rail. Fourth and two lengths off the lead. Just outside of him it's Bicentennial. Sforza request for parole and prodigious. All have seven lengths to make up. In hand is on the move from the back of the pack. He moves within 
within seven and a half of the lead. Spanish Spur tries to go with him. Then Sir Brian Sword and Macaw is still the trailer. He's ten lengths off the lead as they round the far turn. Slough Valley trying to win it now, going to the quarter pole. Mark One is about to move through and take him on. Here comes Mark One. Gander has to go right now. Prodigious is four deep, but under the whips. Forza drafts in with a good chance, as does Request for Parole. Macaw checked off heels at the top of the stretch. Slough Valley is still there. Mark One is there. Then comes Request for Parole. Sir Brian Sword is flying from the back of the pack. He could be the one if he gets out. Slough Valley, Request for Parole, and on rushing. Sir Brian Sword, Request for Parole, makes the lead. Request for Parole, Slough Valley, Request for Parole. Request for Parole beats Slough Valley. Sir Brian Sword finished third, close for fourth between Mark One and In Hand. Well, that makes it two in a row for number eight, Request for Parole in a garden spot, slipped through and one off here and a big effort by number one slough valley coming into this awful layoff going to the lead and hanging in there for the place one of the best looking horses on the grounds we go to the 11th and final fillies and mares four and up fifty thousand claiming tag they're going a mile on the grass johnny sunrise over anxious they're off Rima Rose taken back off the pace, and everybody wins, and Hot and Tot go for the front. To the outside, and Signo Dioro, Crystal Sweet's on the move, and now these two kick on. Signo Dioro and Crystal Sweet will set the pace. Gaelic Miss is joined by Starry D. One more fashion is four deep, and Hot and Tot's at the rail, and they go very quickly early. Everybody wins, broke right on top, and now she's fourth last. Then comes Just Emma and Shawnee Sunrise, and the early trailer is Rima Rose, and they match race to the backstretch going very, very fast. Crystal Sweet and Crystal Sweet and Signo Dioro are matching strides, and they've opened up a big lead to the backside. Signo Dioro's at the hedge, and Crystal Sweet just outside of her. It's five lengths further back to Gaelic Miss and Starry D. They're together third and fourth, and they're also going quickly. Next, it's Hot and Todd. Everybody wins is through into sixth and seven from the front. One more fashion is eight lengths from the lead. Then comes Just Emma and Shawnee Sunrise, and the trailer is Rima Rose, and they round the far turn, and Crystal Sweet has dropped out of it, so that lands Signo Dioro narrowly in front, but now Starry D is moving nicely, and here comes Starry D to take over the lead. Hot and Todd and Gaelic Miss are within three of the front. Shawnee Sunrise and everybody wins. Rima Rose unwinds from the back of the pack. It's Starry D. They have to catch at the top of the lane. Hot and Todd is right alongside in second. Two back, two. Shawnee Sunrise, everybody wins is on the move, and Hot and Todd has taken over the lead. Starry D is back to second. Everybody wins third, and Rima Rose in fourth, but it's Hot and Todd, and she's clear to the wire. Star Starry D is second, Hot and Tot in front. Hot and Tot one by two and a half. Starry D was second, very close for third between Shawnee Sunrise and Everybody Wins. Another huge effort by number four, Hot and Tot for Edwin Broom and Joe Bravo. They're quite a team. They won one yesterday, came back and took the nightcap tonight in a very quick time, 132 and four. I'll tell you this grass course is blazing fast. There's a carryover, 10,500 into Wednesday's card, and let's get a look at the claims. Thoroughbred Action has been brought to you by OBS, ITS, FHBPA, Gainesway Farms, and Adina Springs. That's it for all the action on Sunday. We're dark both Monday and Tuesday, but be sure to be back with us Wednesday night for all the racing action. Thanks for being with us. with Bob Dan Suzuki Magic tonight. Join host Paul Kennedy for the ultimate pregame show as we take you courtside with the best playmakers in the league. Tip off every Orlando Magic game with Bob Dan Suzuki Magic tonight, only on Sunshine. Get your hands up! Get your hands up!
Detroit was last night. Want to get away? No, you can. Fly Southwest Airlines for just $39 to $99 each way when you purchase by January 29th. You are now free to move about the country. Whether it's a trip down to Backo Road in the ACC or the sold-out gyms of the SEC, Sunshine's Conference Basketball Action is a slam dunk. This Tuesday, it's Clemson visiting Georgia Tech. Tip-offs at 7 on Sunshine. For most of his life, Ben Clymer has thrived on the challenges presented to him on the ice. On this edition of Inside the Lightning, the Minnesota native will share with us another of his passions as he takes on the Copperhead Corset in his brook. We'll also talk about his short stint as a member of the Golden Gophers, why he chose to leave school early, and his transition from NHL defenseman to winger. All that and some of number seven's thoughts on the game of golf coming up next. All day long. Look at that, Ben. You can keep that Work. one. That's spectacular, Ben. Thank you. Ben, what attracts you to this game of golf? Well, you know, certainly it's something I can do in the summer that I can stay competitive at. You know, I can uh, get those competitive juices flowing when hockey's not, uh, not really in season. So it's uh, a fun way to spend time with my friends and yet uh, you know, compete a bit. I have seen so many men that play in the National Hockey League take to this game and play it well. Your teammates, are there a number of teammates you play we with? We have quite a few guys who are pretty good. Dave Andrzejczyk's good, Darren Rumble's good. Uh, Brad Richards, Tim Taylor, uh, Marty St. Louis likes playing, Dingman likes playing, so we can get a nice game amongst our teammates. Have you done this your whole life? When you were, when you were growing up in, in Minnesota, I grew, did you play? I grew play up a bit playing with my parents, but uh, I didn't really start playing until I was a senior in high school. My best friend was the captain of the golf team, so he used Down. to take me out and just give me a beating. So it's one of those things you've got to get better because you can't get beat all the time. What is that, the, uh, the cruelty of golf and the beauty of hockey? Right. What, the, uh, uh, I know that you have played on some celebrity and in some celebrity events. You played uh, at a professional event up in New England. Didn't yeah, that was real fun. That summer? was uh, a charity event in, com in conjunction with the Senior Tour for Cam Neely's Foundation. Uh, sure. That went great. It was a great experience. Really nerve-wracking playing in front of that many people. But I think now playing with the guys, it makes those games a lot easier because I've been in a little bit more pressure situation. But you've been in an arena with 20,000 people different. roaring in front of millions of television. You can always, in hockey, you can always go back to, if your instincts take over, you're going to be fine. In golf, you know, we don't know how our instincts are, so got to be a little bit, uh, I think, more on edge. So you can feel a sense of pressure standing in front of a fairway or 150 well, yards away? Well, it's lined with people, for sure. Have you really? Yeah, I, when, they, when they announced my name on the first tee in that Boston <laughs> tournament, that might be the most nervous I've ever been. Maybe outside of my first NHL game, my first NHL playoff game. When you were standing up there, just me, I mean, in a normal Mr. hockey Climber. game, I know that when my instincts take over, I'm going to be fine. But, I mean, those nerves with golf, I mean, that ball can go a ton of different Thanks. ways. Now, you played with a Hall of Fame netminder in Grand Fuhrer. Uh -huh. uh, Grant's a terrific golfer. He played yeah. great, yeah. He, he, did he play well with you? Beat you? What happened out here? That, the first day he shot 68, believe it or not, we played in different groups, and so he had quite a lead on me. Um, I think he had an eight-shot lead, and the second day I knew I had to come out and shoot a good number, um, but I couldn't quite catch him. I think uh, he ended up beating me by two, but uh, it was a great time, um, and to, just to be able to spend time with him and just uh, tell some stories and, and learn about you know, the NHL in his eyes and how it was in the days when he was playing was a neat experience. Well, maybe we can do that today. Absolutely. Have some fun out here on the fairway. Let's go find your ball. Huh? All right. And I'll hit from you down here, <laughs> right in the middle. That one's a little better. I'll probably be in that bunker, I think. I just got to carry it four or five feet in the green. And then it should roll out. Maybe a little more, but just want to keep it under the hole and uh, have an uphill putt. That's what we're hoping for. Sit. I like that one. Ben, I've got you here. That's great work. Thank you. Ben, there are worse ways to spend an afternoon away That's from true. the rink.
There we go. Ben Clymer. Off to a good start. Birdie. That's like getting a, a goal on your first shift. Free. Free? You're giving it away free. Hi, I'm Rob Graham, the president of Vital Basics, and I want to give you a bottle of Focus Factor, one of our best-selling supplements, absolutely free. Why would we give away a free bottle of Focus Factor? Because we know that if you try it, you'll buy it. Focus Factor contains nutrients that work with your natural brain chemistry to support focus, concentration, and memory. With satisfied customers in all 50 states, now is your chance to try Focus Factor absolutely free. Simply call the number on the bottom of your screen and we'll send you a full-size bottle of Focus Factor, a $75 value, absolutely free. You simply provide $4.95 to help cover the cost of shipping. They let you try it free? It must be good. You know, I've been taking Focus Factor since we introduced it over two and a half years ago, and I wouldn't work a day without it. To get your free Focus Factor, call 1-800-224-3580. 1-800-224-3580. Get ready to make the call because tickets are available now for Orlando Magic home games. Starting as low as $10. Call 1-800-4-NBA-TICKS for tickets now. Saturday, January 31st at 7 o'clock, the Magic take on Corey Maggette and the Los Angeles Clippers with all-star Elton Brand. Tickets start as low as $10. Call 1-800-4-NBA-TICKS to order your seats now. At these prices, you can't afford to miss the Magic. Leaping Lightning. The action never stops with your Tampa Bay Lightning. Your Bulls face the Atlanta Thrashers on Super Saturday Night, presented by the St. Petersburg Times. Be one of the first fans on hand and receive a Vincent LeCavier superhero courtesy of Gaines Furniture. Holy Bulls bargains! Get four tickets, four dogs, and four drinks for only $49. Don't forget, Bull Bash kicks off two hours before game time. Call for tickets at 813-301-6600 or log on to puckpower.net. Hey, Ben, when you're over his shot and you see my drive, uh, what are your swing thoughts when you address a ball in golf? What's going through right, your mind? Well, they kind of change throughout the, the summer as I'm playing more, but my two basic thoughts are to stay still over the ball so you don't want to feel like your head's moving back and forth. Right. And then just kind of get behind it and stay behind it. So once you get set behind that ball and you're still, then just trying to release the club and keep, uh, I think that helps me keep a good path. Is, is hockey as finite as golf in this sense? If you're here on a golf club or you're here on a golf club, that's all the difference in the world. You know, just half a wrist turn from being OB or dead down the Well, middle. in some senses. I mean, if your skate is off a little bit, you're going to go down versus really right. accelerate. Um, but, uh, you know, you have two feet, too, so that helps. Tell me, you were out of here with Davis Love III, yep. one of the great golfers of our time. Yep. What kind of fellow was he? What was he like to play with? He was great. I mean, he was real nice, talked to me, uh, you know, basically up every fairway, um, and really made it a, a fun experience, not only just to talk and to get to meet him, but to see him hit some of the shots was uh, truly a great experience. When, when you watched him, were you, were you trying to emulate his swing or learn something from him, or how would you describe that? that I swing? wish I could emulate him, but uh, the one thing I really took away was how smooth his tempo was. I mean, he hits the ball as long as anyone on tour, but his effort level seems so much lower than the average amateur golfer. I mean, he just makes sure that he hits it so solid and so pure in the middle of the golf club that he's using the technology to his advantage. But effortless power, powerless effort is... Um, the great saying in golf. So, is this a passion of yours? Could you see yourself playing golf professionally or taking it to a different level when your um, hockey days were through? I don't know. I mean, that's a, that's a tough dream to chase. There's so many good, uh, good amateurs and good pros who are struggling that uh, that might be a bit of a stretch. But you never know. Uh, we'll see where this takes me. Who do you admire most on tour? Is it the superstars that you would follow, or is it uh, the guys that have to fight and grind and be mentally tough? to stay there. Well, I think you can take a little bit from both of them. Um, whether you take a story like Rich Beam, a guy who you know, sold cell phones in Seattle um, and ended up winning the PGA uh, in Minnesota, right, right up the street from where I grew up. Um, that's a great story. Um, but, you know, you can take, obviously, so many people have, have talked about where Tiger came from, such a child prodigy to, to golf superstardom. That's, you know, that's neat, too, to realize how much pressure he dealt with from an early age. Um, and then you can just 
go across the board with whether you want to talk about Tom Lehman, a Minnesota guy who did kick around the mini tours for a long time. Had every reason to leave. Had ever had a, had a job at the University of Minnesota coaching the golf team, and you know really chose to stick with his dream, and uh, is now living it. I mean, that inspires me as well. Why can a Ben Climber make it in the National Hockey League, and perhaps someone that would be more gifted athletically? Oh, there certainly can't. There certainly is there is. a correlation here? Well, Determination. There's no doubt. There's focus. There are more talented people than I am uh, in the minor leagues, um, but I think. Some of the things that I can bring as far as determination, some grit, um, just willingness to battle and do things that you know, maybe aren't the most fun things to do, but things that our team needs in order to be successful. Uh, that's some of the keys to making me a, a contributor on this hockey team. Well, this is fun. You have about uh, 175 yards yeah, to the stick. To the stick, huh? a little water in front, a couple of mallards. Uh, what would Ben Climber do here? What are you going to play? I'm going to hit a 7 iron. Right. I think we got a little bit of breeze with us. Um, All right. Green lo looks back to front, so we like to be under it a bit. And uh, just try to make a good, smooth swing at it. And... All right, partner. Two putt. Knock it to the heart of the green. Oh, Ben, that sounds good, looks great. Yeah, that one's pretty good, I think. Stay right. Yeah, hung on the right side of the green. Top shelf. We'll take that one. All right, Ben. Now, you talk about pressure, Ben. I gave you a lot of room to knock it inside that, though. Get rid of this. No spare tire. Ben, if this goes in the water, it's our secret. This will be my first practice swing of the day right here, Ben. Who needs practice swings? You're just wasting good swings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember about your two skates, Ben. I like it. Get up there. Well, Ben, I'm not quite there, but at least it's heading the right direction. A little huh? short left. You can chip. You got uphill chip. You should be able to get Progress. That I'm building. Ben, stay up. Hold your head up, Ben. That wasn't great, but it's not, not so bad. We're uphill, at least. That's kind of right in the knee knocker zone. There you go, buddy. Love it. A little awkward on the way back on that one, but I got it back online. Introducing your all-access pass into the NHL. Hit the ice with host Paul Kennedy as we bring you hockey's brightest stars on Toyota Lightning Ice Time. No other show gets you this close to your game. Before every face-off, it's Toyota Lightning Ice Time on Sunshine. All these CDs have to go, so we're giving them away. They're top-of-the-line editions of brand name software. Home Depot, Webster's Encyclopedia, Rand McNally, and the American Medical Association, just to name a few. Just pay the $6.95 shipping, and we'll send you $100 bucks in great name software. Learn secrets of the Home Depot pros. Wallpapering, plumbing, carpentry, tile, insulation, and more. Then create your own home on your PC, add walls, carpets, a new addition, and see it in a 3D walkthrough. Create printable maps of anywhere in North America, and try restaurants, hotels, and sightseeing stops along the way. Remember, this is free. How about researching almost anything? History, maps, nature, science, geography, and more. How about free medical help, medical emergencies, CPR, drug facts, burns, fractures, cuts, bruises, and essential information for any family. And we're giving it away. And if you call right now, we'll throw in a great $30 typing tutorial. That makes almost $150 worth of software free. Call 1-800-434-5230. Whether it's a trip down Tobacco Road in the ACC or the sold-out gyms of the SEC, Sunshine's conference basketball action is a slam dunk. This Tuesday, it's Clemson visiting Georgia Tech. Tip-offs at 7 on Sunshine. Want to take off? Enterprise Rent-A-Car has takeoff weekend specials from $9.99 a day. That's Friday to Monday, just $9.99 a day. So take off this weekend. Log on to Enterprise.com or call 1-800-RENT-A-CAR. What's the hot new thing in active wear? The Bengay Pain Relieving Patch. It's what everyone's wearing to get deep heating relief in a patch that lasts up to eight hours. Try on the new Bengay Pain Relieving Patch. It's what's hot in pain relief. Now, climber closing in. Fires! 
He scores! He ripped the top shelf under the club. This is the fan in me. Why yeah. players wear particular numbers. You have seven. Was that by happen happenstance, you know chance? What? My whole life I've grown up wearing number 22. Um, all the way you know, through high school and college. And I can't remember who had it right when I got here. I think maybe Wayne Primo. And they gave me seven right when I came here. And, uh, you know, I liked it and just stuck with it. And then I got to a point where I didn't really want to change. It, it sure. became when we traded Prems. Uh, I didn't want to change. And then Dan Boyle took it. So uh, I've been happy with the number. And hopefully it can bring me a little luck this year as well. Your home state has a passion for hockey that might be unsurpassed. Talk about your high school years and how you got involved in the sport. And you have said that playing in the high school state championship might be your greatest the biggest, thrill. Yeah, one of the biggest moments of my life, for sure. And I don't think people really understand or respect how big that is in Minnesota. Uh, as a as 10th grader, 15 years old, I was playing in front of 18,000 people. And to put that into comparison, and that's just, that's odd for a high school team to draw that many people. But that's how passionate Minnesota people Every are. Every high school pretty much that's has a, a hockey that's program. That's a state tournament. Um, and it's, you know, it's the biggest venue of any high school sport, bar none, in Minnesota. Uh, it's on TV. Um, and even our, our normal regular season games, we'll, we'll have three, 4,000 people consistently every game. Um, and it's, it's a really neat experience to be able to grow up in a community and play for them and, and get supported as well as you do. Maybe uh, high school football down here might right. be comparable in a way mm -hmm. to a sense. When did you know you were going to be very good? You could be a superior player at that level or perhaps collegiately. When I knew, I guess the first time I knew I was probably going to have an opportunity to play in the NHL, I was 16 years old and I played for the under 17 team, the U.S. Uh, national team. And I figured at that point if I was one of the top 20 players in the U.S. that you know, statistically I should be able to make it. Uh, in the NHL. So that was a real neat experience. I ended up playing uh, the following year for the under-18 team and then uh, for the World Juniors as well. So, You go to the University of Minnesota, mm -hmm. uh, which is a cultural phenomenon to its own. To have gopher tickets and to see the gophers take the ice is something to behold. My family has had gopher tickets since I was about 12 years old. So I grew up watching those guys more than I grew up watching the NHL guys. Um, so to, to be given that opportunity to play for the University of Minnesota was, was a thrill and a dream come true. The tradition of Minnesota hockey, Broughton, Herb Brooks, uh, there are wonderful names associated with that and, and the it passion really is. is limitless. Yeah, the, uh, the people in Minnesota love go for hockey. And I mean, recently that's changed a bit because, not, not that their passion has changed, but when I played there, it was strictly Minnesota kids on a Minnesota team. Now there's a few non-Minnesota players, but for the most part, it's comprised of you know, Minnesota talent. And just to be able to play with players that you grew up playing against your entire life and to carry that on into college uh, and be teammates is a pretty new experience. Now, you blew out your shoulder your sophomore year, played in only one game. Yeah. Did you fear your career might be done? Uh, you know what, I was, I was worried but I knew it was a basic enough procedure that you know a lot of people had came back from it and then if I rehabbed and, and did what I could do uh, in the weight room and on the bike that I should be able to come back full strength. And you went to Seattle? Yeah, I, I, ended, juniors. Up, I ended up leaving school after that year and gave up my college eligibility and played junior in uh, Seattle which was a pretty unpopular decision in Minnesota at the time but you, know, I, you, you caught flack for it. You were criticized for I that? I caught a lot of flack for it. And, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't something that was fun to deal with, if, to read, you know, this guy saying that you're making a huge decision, that you're, you're leaving school prematurely. Um, but I thought at that point that that was the best choice for me to get to the NHL. Yeah, it, and it's worked for you. You played mm -hmm. 70 games there in Seattle, mm -hmm. skated well, but you were a defenseman at that time, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I really love Seattle. I had a great, great experience there. I lived with a great family. And that hockey really, I think, matured me to play in the NHL. It's different hockey. It's much more physical. You're playing more games. You're riding on buses, you know, in some pretty ugly towns as far as your bus trips are five hours play, five hours home play the next night. So, and the towns are, are fine. They, they love their hockey there. They're screaming and hollering at you. And it's a great environment to learn how and to you grow up. Pro. Yeah. Well, let's try this. Par three, about a hundred and, uh, what is this, 165? I'd say about 165. We've got a back bend. All right. 
so. And you'll play, what will you hit here, seven iron? I'm gonna hit eight. You'll hit um, eight. Just hoping to leave this one a little bit short. Most of these greens, we wanna be short of that hole, trying to putt up at it, not leave ourselves a, a tough one like we had last time. Now, Ben, in terms of mental toughness, I totally ignore all that sand. What's that? <laughs> what sand? It looks like the Sahara surrounding. You're first up, Mr. Climber. You got the hole. This is all you, Ben. All right. It's kind of on the back You're right. You're dancing up there. Good. I think you're dancing up there, Ben. Uh, somewhere close. I think we should be able to make three. Leaping lightning. The action never stops with your Tampa Bay Lightning. Your Bulls face the Atlanta Thrashers on Super Saturday Night, presented by the St. Petersburg Times. Be one of the first fans on hand and receive a Vincent LeCavier superhero courtesy of Gaines Furniture. Holy bulk bargain. Get four tickets, four dogs, and four drinks for only $49. Don't forget, Bolt Bash kicks off two hours before game time. Call for tickets at 813-301-6600 or log on to puckpower.net. Free? Free? You're giving it away free. Hi, I'm Rob Graham, the president of Vital Basics, and I want to give you a bottle of Focus Factor, one of our best-selling supplements, absolutely free. Why would we give away a free bottle of Focus Factor? Because we know that if you try it, you'll buy it. Focus Factor contains nutrients that work with your natural brain chemistry to support focus, concentration, and memory. With satisfied customers in all 50 states, now is your chance to try Focus Factor absolutely free. Simply call the number on the bottom of your screen and we'll send you a full-size bottle of Focus Factor, a $75 value, absolutely free. You simply provide $4.95 to help cover the cost of shipping. They let you try it free? It must be good. You know, I've been taking Focus Factor since we introduced it over two and a half years ago, and I wouldn't work a day without it. To get your free Focus Factor, call 1-800-224-3580. 1-800-224-3580. What do I expect from my new full-size truck? I expect it to be powerful. I expect it to have room for my crew or my family. And it's a Toyota, so I know it'll show up for work every day, like me. Introducing the all-new 2004 Tundra Double Cab, Toyota's biggest truck ever. And now get $12.50 cash back on all 2004 Tundra regular and access cab bottles. See your local dealer or visit buyatoyota.com today. It's a carbon copy, Ben. Yeah, pretty similar to that last putt. I think just a little straighter and maybe a little faster. Get there, Ben. Get there. That's all right. You know, I would have liked to hit it a little more, but knock that in there, Ben. All Finish right. strong, buddy. What is it about golf if you finish strong, Ben, even if you struggled throughout the day? Well, you, feel, you come roaring back. You always feel good about yourself, at least for uh, you know, that drive home. You can't wait to get back out there and play again. It's a goofy game like that, but uh, that's what keeps you coming back. You know, you can lose five different ways betting with your buddies, but if you win that last press, you feel like you did something out there. Good on you, Ben Clymer. Well done, buddy. Thank you. That was fun. Tell me, tell me about playing in the National Hockey League uh, and what a challenge it's been for you over the last three years and how tough a game that is that perhaps fans don't understand, the, the grind of 82 games and having to be at your best. It is tough. I mean, uh, you know, you don't always feel the best, you know, whether your shoulder hurts, whether your back hurts, whether uh, you just played back-to-back -back games uh, in, you know, two different time zones. It doesn't matter. Um, you're expected to go out there and perform. You're paid to go out there and perform. So um, I think sometimes people don't realize that uh, you know it's not an easy game to to play every day, and it is a job for us. Um, it's a job that we absolutely love and we're thrilled to do. But you know there are times when it's very difficult, and there are times when it's uh, you know the absolute greatest job in the world. And then there are times when you're kind of shaking your head, going, 
what I get myself into out here today. Well, I, you have been, you came into the league as a defenseman, mm -hmm. and you moved up to Ford. What was your reaction when, I guess it was Steve Ludzik, asked you to, to move up? Well, um, actually it wasn't Ludzik, it was Dudley, and Ludzik had just been fired, so Torts was the coach then. What was the biggest adjustment in, in having to go from being a blue liner to a forward? Just to try to let go of some of my defensive, defensive responsibilities. I mean, as a forward, obviously you still have those, some responsibilities, but they're different. And uh, realizing that, you know, sometimes calculated risks are okay, um, whereas a D, those are much, you know, your margin for error is much less. Um, and just, uh, I guess, trying to free yourself up and just trying to go out there and shoot the puck and make good things happen for the team. If you're playing up front as a forward, what do you bring there? You skate with guys in this league that are blinding fast, a Vincent LeCavalier, mm -hmm. a Martin St. Louis, the, the component parts. How would I define your skills and the strengths of your game? I know uh, hockey guys want to talk a, about that. That's themselves, a, a good question. Yeah, I think hockey players do have a harder time describing themselves because I think we're pretty humble as a, a group. Um, but I think something that I can bring is I bring uh, a good work, work ethic every night as far as showing up and trying to contribute. Uh, I think I do, you know, some of the simple things that maybe uh, go overlooked fairly well is that help the hockey team and maybe some ways that... Um, toughness? That, that you can be tough fan, every night? I, yeah, I try to uh, finish my checks, bring some toughness. And, uh, you know, if I can provide some scoring as well, that's something I'd like to do as well. There, there is, in this sport, I would think this is true, that effort can make a bigger difference at the major league level, at the NHL level, in this sport than it can in Major League Baseball, in the NFL, or in the NBA, that will and a work ethic. I think especially in the playoffs. That's when it really... In the playoffs. When it really comes to being an extremely large factor. Because it's not always the best team that wins, it's the, the best unit that wins, the best uh, group that wins. It's not necessarily the best team on paper. What would you like to see in the future? What would the immediate future hold for you? What's the upside for this hockey team? Well, um, we started out great. Um, obviously, that was well documented, and we just really need to keep that going. Realize that the season is full of peaks and valleys, and uh, as long as we can never get too high or too low, we're going to be okay. Ben, you're well mature beyond your years. You're 25 now. Mm -hmm. How do you want people to remember years from now, Ben Clymer? What do you want to leave with this game? What do you want to accomplish in this game? What kind of person well, does Ben Clymer want to be? In a perfect situation, in another 10 years from now, when I play my last Lightning game, uh, I'd certainly like to be a Lightning player my whole career. Whether that's realistic or not, I don't know. It's not, it's not up to me. And the game's changed from years past where players played their whole career with one team. But that would be something that I would like to, uh, to have. Um, if I could have the fans or, or the people who, who respect hockey and know hockey say anything about me, I'd just like to say, have them say that I was a hardworking player, I was an honest player, I gave my best every night, and that, uh, that maybe I was a player that they'd like to have on their team. That would be a, a compliment to me um, if they said that about me. And I'd like them to uh, say I had about five Stanley Cups. <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Look at that, Ben. I want to play, but... Ooh. You swing fearlessly, Ben. <laughs> Golf shot. And that would be exactly what you wanted to achieve. I think you got maybe the final eight players. Yeah. Match play. Yeah, that's a cool tournament. All over America, people are throwing out their cable boxes and switching to Direct TV. That's because right now, when you call this toll-free number or visit our website, you can get a free three-room DirecTV system with professional installation. You heard right. Get a free DirecTV system with standard professional installation, a $400 value when you call Prime TV now. Get the best DirecTV programming with access to over 225 available channels featuring premium movie channels like HBO, Stars, Showtime, and Cinemax. And there's sports. Sports. DirecTV has sports and NFL Sunday ticket. We get all this, more channels, better quality pictures and sound, plus our local channels. At a price that can be cheaper than cable. With no hidden charges. And no upfront fees. Hey, knock it off up there. Call 1-800-391-6399. That's 1-800-391-6399.
The puck drops here for exciting lightning hockey action. Experience what real rivalries are all about as Tampa Bay skates against the NHL's best. Go between the pipes with the league's top keepers and prepare for bone-crunching checks along the glass. Join the pursuit for the ultimate prize and all its glory with the NHL on Sunshine. Next on the ice, the Lightning stop in the Steel City to face the Pittsburgh Penguins, Tuesday at 7 on Sunshine. Now, from our Fox Sports studios, sit back and get ready to rock. Fox time with attitude. The Pistons looking to get another long win streak going. Shouldn't be a problem with the lowly Hawks in town, right? Earning time and a half. The Spartans have the Big Ten lead on the line in West Lafayette, but the Boilermakers are a ranked team. Hmm. Plus, we're kicking off Super Bowl week. Let the media frenzy and hype begin. Breaking it down. Our Rob Rubick has the keys to the game, and believe it or not, he finds a way for both teams to win. One week and counting until Super Bowl 38. Hi, everybody. Ron Callen, Carrie Sayers with you on the Detroit Sports Report. And is $40 million enough for Pudge? We're going to find out soon. Plus, the Wings head to Dallas wondering what the heck has happened to their high-powered offense. But we begin tonight with the Pistons, who know a thing or two about their offense abandoning them. Sluggish starts this past week had them stuck in a little two-game losing skit, bringing them down quickly from the high of that franchise record winning streak. But with the Hawks in town, the Pistons had to feel pretty good about their chances of snapping out of it. Uh, you know, they'd already beaten them a few times this season. The Hawks had only won five road games all year, so Larry Brown was looking for a good performance. Starts off with the Hawks, though. Jason Terry hits the three-pointer. He had 22 points and nine assists. But the Pistons answer, Rip Hamilton, the alley-oop for Ben Wallace, who finishes. Wallace had a double-double. And the Hawks in transition. Terry Sharon, the love, gets it to Steven Jackson, who hits for three. Hawks up five at the break. And in the, then in the third quarter, Terry picks it back up. Finding Sharif Abdurrahim wide open for the 17-footer later in the third. Chris Crawford goes up and around Big Ben for the layup. And the Hawks extend their lead to nine. Larry Brown's thinking we need some help. And Corliss Williamson provides it. Hosting up with a nice spin move and lay in. Then backs down his defender and sinks the hook shot there. Williamson's got all the moves today. Driving baseline and hitting the reverse lay in. Williamson dumped in 20. But the Hawks were just too strong. Even... For Big Ben, folks, on his big hair rattle, uh, on his big hair bobblehead day, Big Ben gets denied. The Pistons are completely rejected at this point. That's their third loss in a row and their first loss at home since December 26th. Atlanta dressed only nine players for this game, still managed to end its four-game losing skid. Pistons shooting just 69% from the charity stripe and only hitting on one of 12 three-point attempts. And as Trevor Thompson found out this loss comes down to a lesson we all learned as kids. At halftime, assistant coach Herb Brown told me that the single biggest problem facing the Pistons tonight was they weren't sharing the ball, and that's what happened when they lost to Indiana. So, in other words, when they don't share, they don't score, and that means they don't win. You know, if you don't move the ball, you can't offensive rebound. You don't move people. They play behind our big guys, so... And, and then we just had no, it looked like we had no life, you know. The guys in this locker room feed off of me and Rip, you know. And when we struggle, you know, a lot of times the team struggles, you know what I mean. And, uh, we know that, and, you know, we, we try to take responsibility for that. And, you know, tonight we struggle. You know, we didn't really have no rhythm out there. You know what I mean? If you watch the game, it was no consistent rhythm. You know, we, was playing, we wasn't playing like the team that won 13 games, and nothing wasn't clicking like we won 13 games. We poured a lot into the street, you know, mentally and physically. And, um, I mean, you're going to have down periods during the season. And uh, tonight was just one of them. But we just need to go back, regroup, and uh, look at film, check out our mistakes, and uh, change them. It's obvious that 13-game winning streak has taken something out of the Pistons. Tonight's game had no flow. It was lifeless. And consequently, they've now lost three straight. They'll try to correct all that Wednesday night in Boston. I'm Trevor Thompson for your Detroit Sports Report. Thanks, Trevor. Well, we're not quite done with this one yet. We won't be until we find the exact answer to how the Pistons end that streak. A bit later in the show, Fred and Greg lean on the little guys for the solution. 
The Michigan State Spartans have no cupcakes on their schedule this season. Every contest has been against some of the best. And today, it was one of the best in the Big Ten. The 23rd ranked Purdue Boilermakers in West Lafayette. And it turned out to be a pretty spectacular college basketball game. Check it out, the sea of yellow. That was the Ooh. greeting for Tom Izzo and company. Early on, Brandon McKnight, the steal of the lay-in, Spartans down 10 already. First half, new by 12, Shannon Brown. Watch the nice drive and the right-hander, but Purdue dominated the first half up by eight. In the second half, Kelvin Torbett. Watch this, nice slam there. Spartans within six, and they keep fighting. Paul Davis, watch the great bounce pass to Chris Hill for the layup. Hill with 18 points today, Purdue by one. And then 10 seconds left. Spartans ahead by two. Brandon McKnight with the drive and the layup. The game's tied. But watch this. Have you ever seen this before? Chris Hill takes it back, passes to Maurice, and watch what happens. The ball gets stuck. Can you believe that between the glass and the bucket? We're going to go to overtime, folks. Spartans start off hot. Paul Davis, the nice slam there. Spartans by two. But the Boilermakers were unstoppable from then on. Brandon McKnight, 20 footer. And then Kenneth Lowe off the glass. Spartans couldn't catch a break. And they lose it by six in overtime. Good day for Davis again. 18 points, but just three rebounds. A tough, tough game because Gene Cady's Boilermakers are a good basketball team. They improved to 14 and four on the year. Spartans dropped to eight and eight, but are three and two in the Big Ten. Take a look at the Big Ten standings. Wisconsin, the Boilermakers, and Indiana all sit atop at four and one. Spartans one back, Wolverines in the middle of the pack, two and three. Long way to go, though, and both Michigan schools are playing pretty well. Women's action, how about those Spartans? Knocking off the ninth-ranked Gophers, 72-69. Lindsey Bowen with 18. No doubt 20th-ranked Michigan State will move up in the rankings. And Michigan, meanwhile, losing by...